In this video, we're going to talk about Infernos and Fury. Meet the Scorched, Earth's last hotheads. This is like Hell Spawns and Avengers. You don't need no Avengers. What you need right now is the Scorched. All right, my brothers and my sisters from another mister. This is a comic book breakdown of the Scorched, issue number 1 through 25, brought to you by Rated Comics. Now, before we get into the content, links in description if you wish to add any of the comic books in this video and or any of our rated comic exclusives support the art support the industry timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue because hey if you could watch a full three and a half hour video by all means you are top g in my book and you got my respect but if you got to break it down to some little bit of nuggets and watch a little bit here a little bit there hey you still got my respect bro we love you like that and my sister from another mister we love you too Lastly, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to Rated Comics YouTube channel to help us make more content like this. With all that being said, hey, let's get into the content. Start off with Gunslinger Spawn, She Spawn, and Medieval Spawn in Russia. The exact location is not confirmed. But not every mission goes as planned. It's aggravating, it's maddening when it's the first one. Spawn didn't give any of them consent to do this, but it didn't matter. They bonded together regardless. And right now their goals are twofold. First, extract Plague Spawn, and the second is to make sure these two girls in front of Jessica Priest don't die. And these soldiers, these militia soldiers with guns and tanks are ready to go up there and give them war. Jessica runs out the back and window. Gunslinger spawn a medieval, you follow. I thought we came here to get plague. Just jump! Gunslinger is right. They came in here to get plague spawn. Gunslinger is right. Jessica made promises while leading this mission. This wasn't part of it. They did come in for plague spawn. Girls, close your eyes, says Jessica. So how they end up together, it all started a week earlier near the gate walls of Chitna. Spawn wanted this to be a covert mission. Instead, she spawn invited some big hitters to come along. The Russian HQ for Psalms 137 Military Division. This one guy in the that's leading the heat HQ tells him, our new Bible will soon be written and then we shall boom he gets shot in the head and spawn answers room like none of you will be alive to read a single passive okay jessica put the party together so start leading it shoot medieval spawns there cheese spawns there redeemers there and they go to work on these guys jessica asks spawn do you want any survivors but he tells jessica i need to borrow your gun some boundaries need to be set spawn asks this girl this is a secret base right yes we're off the grid good then <laughs> no one will miss you boom shoots the girl now i don't know what spawn did here but he's been through enough wars to understand you don't know if you got a cohesive unit until they're all on their own and under duress i guess this is foreshadowing what spawn's about to do and jessica's shocked that spawn is like why are you shooting her you know she could have some value or intel spawn has jessica her gun and tells her to take your gun clean up this mess what clean up this place you do it yourself and why would we do that anyway because this is going to be your new home. Enjoy it. And it doesn't look like they'll be returning to Spawn Sanctuary anytime soon. Later, Mark cleans up the mess. He, he bitches that these guys ain't helping them out. And all you guys whisper, whispering back there does not instill a lot of teen spirit. And Redeemer's like, you're right. But I was about to tell She Spawn, I only agreed to join you guys because I thought Spawn was going to lead us. I'm not just interested in just being a soldier. I'm here because Al said he'll help me find what I'm searching for. And Jessica's like, you follow me and I'll get you what you want. Let's take a walk, Redeemer. And Redeemer's like, you're kind of new to this and that's my concern. I am. But that allows me to move with autonomy. And Jessica's like, I have a plan. I have a visual. And that autonomy gives me advantage. And Redeemer's like, how's that? I can recruit any soldiers needed for our missions outside of Spawn's wishes or anyone else. And Redeemer's like, our? What do you mean our mission? And Jessica's like, I think I can get Medieval on board and another. And I was hoping you'd be also a part of it. But you should know we'll be working outside of Al's wishes. And Redeemer's like, my goal is to find Reaper, and you were the last to see him. So Redeemer tells Jessica, you help me find Reaper, and I'll help you with your offer. So Mark tells Jessica that his helmet's vibrating, and he puts it on, and this ancient relic over his head courses through him, where he sees sacrifices of Jessica leaving her daughter, the future of Redeemer for humanity, and all these flashbacks just taking place. And the features foretelling him that enough has been done, there's been enough suffering, and this war needs to stop. That's what we have at stake. Meanwhile, in Wyoming, Gunslinger Spawn is running away from these Locust Rangers, and they've been tracking Gunslinger down for days, inflicting injuries to him with each encounter. Sometimes the Rangers shift their forms, 
to werewolves where gunslinger spawn handles at other times they shift to locusts which they're able to bleed him out dry him out and make him weaker wanting to send a more direct message the locust rangers send in one of their own everyone knows how weak a spawn you are gunslinger you're weak and bleeding give up so we don't have to play these games squash crunch they think me if they think i'm weak now's the best time to face me head on he peers out into the shadow you've got 10 seconds said these locust rangers Gunslinger spawns like, okay, good. A cruel smile crosses Gunslinger's face. <laughs> Gunslinger spawn attacks him. And Gunslinger spawn tells him why you shoot him. You boys ain't smart enough to be doing this on your own. And Cogs is too smart to have sent you. That leaves you one question. Who sent you? Instead of them answering Gunslinger, his flesh is torn with barbed razor edges cut into his already scarred neck. Wrap around, toss him around. This is a war, boy. And your master spawn is wasting time hunting an amateur cult instead of paying attention to bigger threats. It's laughable. And they're just wiping the floor with Gunslinger spawn. Jessica Redeemer and Medieval spawn are watching from a distance and they're like, you know, we got to help Gunslinger out, yo. Jessica's like, nah, man, I've watched him long enough. He loves this shit he finds a way to get out of it latches on to him pulls him in rips his head off of the locust right here this is really gory right here so jessica praises him nice job and gunslinger responds like look whatever you're here for my answer is no so jessica asks him russia don't know if you heard of it but we're i don't care you see these things ain't dead he just deflects her request and talks about these locusts and these locusts are regrouping all the locusts from all the bodies are reconstructing into a whole that is much worse than its parts. And whatever this, it looks like Omega Spawn Locust version right here. Sin will consume you, will burn you in its flames. So we see Chi Spawn going to work on him. Medieval Spawn lighting him up. Gunslinger Spawn blasting this thing away. And the result of their combined firepower led to this brother's defeat. Medieval Spawn asks, are they dead? They are dead, but we gotta leave a mark. We gotta send a clear message, says Gunslinger Spawn. So he lights up a fire, indicating that if anyone wants to come after us, we'll burn every one of them alive. So she Spawn's like, oh, so you joining? Is Spawn giving you direct orders? She Spawn's like, no, he knows nothing about it. And there's something about Spawn not giving orders turns enlightens gunslinger spawn to accept her invitation and because of that scorch that's an awesome intro that's how the scorch came together russia will be the beginning of how they begin to fall apart they're on their way to russia and in pensa russia the night is quiet it allows these runaways a rare chance to find a few hours of peace until a death squad shatters their dreams, opens the door, and the chase is on. And as they run away from them, they're like, hey, General Christian's orders are to catch them alive. He wants to know what they saw out in the woodlands. People know all too well that to stand up to government forces would destroy their own lives. So the citizens learn to turn away in all disturbances. It's not worth being a witness. As they scream for help, they get cornered by these two soldiers and are like, Kershev wants you alive, but sad you can show up with a few scars. Rawr, they morph into werewolves. There have been rumors of this. General Kershev and his special squadron of elites, men who are no longer men, before they maul these two girls to not death, but just at least put some marks on them, the scores show up to protect the girls and kill all the wolves. And these soldiers have never seen anything like this before. Their intel that they've been given is all wrong horribly wrong hell spawns are not supposed to work together never in their history have any of them bonded together for a common cause so as they shoot and attack and they do some damage and kick some ass many will spawn ass was all this carnage worth it she spawn responds with if redeemer and i are right then reaper's in danger from a dozen factions he'll do anything to strip his powers medieval's like then why this side mission when we could just go directly and find reaper we can't it's not that easy because there's a lot of god's angels and we need to bomb and blow them all the way plague spawn is the bomb <laughs> okay well so Gunslinger, you want to find a place, Spawn? That's easy. Hey, hey, how? Where the hell? And so he just gets to work and starts ripping mouths and dislocating teeth. And Redeemer's like, what are you doing? Getting answers. Before he could do the same torture, rip this guy in half from upper mouth to bottom lip. He's like, wait, I'll talk. I'll tell you where he is. This better be good. He pulls out his gun and puts it to this brother's head. The black one that looks like you, he's the click south at General Christian's base. It's where he created all of us. He's trying to bond with it. That's all I need to know, Gunslinger says. Boom! Blast him in the head and she spawns like, what the hell? That's not how we work. Well, get used to it. Here's a pistol medium. You're going to need more <laughs> than armor. Gunslinger spawns kind of funny. Now, as for these two ladies, I don't know what, you, what your intentions are with these two ladies, but she spawn ain't having it. Get away from them. They're scared as it is. 
Relax, says Gunslinger. I'm just making sure of something. Gunslinger tells him if your instincts don't get any better, that could be a problem for all of us. You think he was human? Look at him. With the wave, Gunslinger exposes her true nature and their werewolves. Medieval points out that she spawns new, all, new to all this, so they're trying to form and work together, but everyone has different experiences on different experience levels, but this is very interesting seeing how they can work together. So obviously, she spawns compassionate and she converts to her human form, hoping that the girls will calm down. Medieval's like, all right, take my cape, it'll warm them up, we gotta do a little stakeout. So they found shelter later on, to comfort, you know, just to wait to plan an attack. They get the map to set the staging while she conveys the roles of each of them will play in their upcoming mission. Even though these are seasoned warriors and Gunstrickers obviously having a tough time standing still for a stakeout. And it's a hard concept for them to sell to a soldier that waiting is half the battle. Half the fighting happens off the field. So Gunslinger's question is, and our enemies must know we're after them, then why are we waiting to give them to fortify it? Instead of waiting, let's just go for it. Midi was like, patience, despite your impatience, man, this will be a two-pronged assault. Having a majority of one place means they'll be unbalanced. Now don't jeopardize this mission and just be still. So Medieval Spawn wants to know, what did you guys see? So he touches them and he gets a glimpse and just like that, he's in their girl's mind alone. He sees that they're orphans, they're running away from these soldiers and they're fighting for fighting for decency and they're trying to bond together and they get abused like hey we'll kill you in broad daylight from this general Kristoff and as they run away to flee from their lives they go into the woods and what they see in the woods is something they can't unsee so when one of the soldiers tells them you there you labs are in private territory come back here as they run away and he chases them down, something attacks this soldier from behind and this orphan girl sees it. Gordon Beale, this is an awesome image of Plague Spawn. She saw him and where they had tried to imprison prison him. What none of them knew was that the, the thing was the original prototype for Hell Spawn's uniform, but it had too many defects. It was supposed to be destroyed. Instead, it survived. You cannot unsee that stuff right there. So Medieval Spawn and Odessa's mind meld suddenly ends. Can you show me where you saw the creature? I think so, she says. Gunslinger's like, hey, something's outside. So Jessica orders Redeemer to go out there and scout and see what that is. As he flies up to the top of the, to the sky to get a scouting report to see what it is. Unfortunately, what the armor hero sees is something far worse than anything I had prepared for. She spawned, if you can hear me, move those girls now or else everyone's going to get slaughtered that may already be too late and that's where we end off with the scorch issue number one now there's an epilogue i got to leave a little meat on the bone with you guys for this with this comic book for those of you that wish to purchase this comic book link in the description if you wish to add this to your comic book collection the ending's awesome we get to know spawns motives and terry this was an awesome blood gluts story moving forward this is just a fun time reading this comic you will dig it now we begin this issue with Colonel Khrushchev in a laboratory with Plague Spawn chained up, restricted, can't do nothing. He takes a little bit of his symbiote away from him because Colonel Khrushchev is a man who loves fighting as much as a hell spawn. Colonel, the perimeter has been breached. And Colonel's like, all right, then we fight them. We've been prepared for this. Remember how powerful you are. Remember how special you become. He's Russian, so I gotta try a little Russian. Because of this, we've all become gods. He injects himself with the symbiote from Plague Spawn, not knowing what the hell he's doing and then again he kind of does but he's using himself as a guinea pig in this matter and he puts plague into his own bloodstream hoping to become as much of a monster as those that he fights colonel khrushchev is like those who can transform transform now but they broke in through our second wave what are our orders find the girls and kill them they know too much their information can't get out it's time to deliver them a war says colonel deploy all guerrilla battalions and this is a all hell break you loose. Medieval spawn, she spawn, redeemer. They're just going to work. Now the problem with that strategy is some of these heroes have been through dozens of wars against some of the great tactical minds in history. Their skills hold over many centuries. So when faced with this new onslaught, they fight with an attitude that screams, bring that shit on. Actually, I added that word in there myself. It just felt appropriate. Look in the sky. One of the girls says, it's a raven. Ravens are birds of death from old Russian stories said to have often flown over field searching for carry-on so this raven is built to steal and takes out one of the girls odessa natasha's the lone survivor they have to keep these girls alive because of what they saw with the russian base in issue number one feel free to check that out if you haven't Medieval spawns like the girls gunslinger spawns like get to her i'll take care of the last few they shot her what the heck the 
calm down so that all stuff is going loose. And meanwhile, you see this red light painting, pointing to his next. Boom! The sniper bullets come from the woods. That it's a necro bullet. Whoever this unknown sniper is, my necro bullet has wounded the first hell spawn. Go to the tree line, says she spawn. Gunslinger spawn gets shot. Take out target number two, lock it on a third. Before he can release the trigger on, she spawned reinforcements by the way of spawn coming here, which unexpectedly he punches his fist through his head. You go, spawn. Spawn tells she spawn in the woods. Find her. I'm heading east. I think they see us already. Jessica over here says Terry. All things are going loose. Everything's going on. Pandemonium and so on. This is a hell of an issue right here. Meanwhile, she spawns sees Redeemer is not doing too well. None of his evasive maneuvers seem to be working to try to evade the Raven. So she spawn takes up, takes the launcher, aims, and he's like, oh, I got you now, sucker. But guess what? One of the wolves goes in from behind her. Boom! If she can't get a shooting while she launches, she's freaking pissed. Break some bones and said, boom! Get off of me. You know who I am. I'm she spawn, damn it. And she learned during all her wet work missions. <laughs> Why you say wet? And also, there's always a way to get a shoot off. So she kicks the wolf in the face, Shoots the rocket launcher, boom, explosion, hits the raven. Now the Black Flag gang is in trouble with, led by Colonel Khrushchev. The Black Flag knows the rage flowing in these hell spawns from having their loved ones erased will be unleashed by full force. And none of them will want to be in the battle. In, this, in fact, most will even want to be here on Earth right now, not in this timeline. But each bids their own time until they find an opportunity to change their current fates. Now, so they go to work, kill these wolves, and they're just going ham. Gunslinger Spawn's like, all right, Spawn, no one left to maim, so you can crawl back to your little hideout now. Spawn's like, man, relax. Those are just distractions. Something else is about to happen. In this case, Khrushchev Plague will sacrifice whatever he needs to achieve his mission, even if it means sacrificing his own. The true mission of the Black Flag is much more sinister. Their true goal is to identify weaponry, biological, nuclear, or supernatural. When they discovered the Plague Spawn symbiote prototype, it was the perfect disease because that weapon could be better. And the thing with this disease, it wants to affect. And he starts impaling his own. Spawn uses his cloak to shield himself for it. And Natasha freaks out because that's the thing she saw in the woods. It's that thing again. Terry, grab her. Khrushchev talks to Spawn in plague spawn form. When I was younger, your head had a very high price. One that I wanted to collect through Afghanistan, the Ukraine, Serbia. I murdered dozens of Americans trying to find you. But like this traitor in my own army, I hope to make you suffer before snuffing you out. And when I found out what you become, that's when I began testing on myself. Spawn attempts to delay something. Oh! hoping for reinforcements. And reinforcements he got, Medieval Spawn comes in, cuts off one of his symbiote limbs, buys him some time with them. What they did was call a pincer attack. It, you know, they attack from every flank, then wait as you hold your greatest strength for the full head-on assault. Medieval Spawn says, you killed that girl who had no way of standing up to you. Sacrifice your own man, where's your honor? And pales him again. Gunslinger is like, let me have some of this fun too. I skin his dog symbiote from him. If not, he'll just bleed to death. The Scorch team leaves Gunslinger Slinger to do his thing. They're looking for something else, so they leave. Jessica is like, hey, Spawn, glad you joined the party. What changed your mind? It's simple. You need me. That right. You think we can't handle this ourselves? You can't. Whatever. Someone has files on these girls, and we need to know why. And Jessica's like, there's a boy, Sergi, the same files with the Natasha and Odessa says they were all orphans. Minnie was like, why does that matter? Because it matters because the American who adopted them, Crucial, thought he was trying to steal their secrets. About play? I think so, but even they had info, they were, what were they going to do with it anyway? Sell it? Who cares if the girls saw something? What were they? They can't possibly sell it, right? So Spawn found his soldiers like, all right, well, let me get some answers from the guy. You're going to tell me everything. And Spawn uses telepathic powers, and the soldier tells him. There were four of them, Natasha, Odessa, Sergei, and the old man from America. He scouted orphanages looking for kids to exploit and train, hoping he'd eventually control. Plague for his own purposes. He wanted humans to have the power, not hell. Then humans would reign again. Khrushchev wanted the same thing so he could get rid of all of you. But if he couldn't, then they would. Who the hell are they, says Spawn. Meanwhile, back in the thick woods, Terry's chasing down Natasha as she's burning up from whatever it is. I believe it's being exposed to Plague Spawn or something or something. I don't know. Terry's like, you need to stop. No, I can't stop. They'll blame me. They'll say it was all my fault. Who's going to blame me? Sergi and the old man. They run for another quarter mile before she collapsed. 
Terry tries to keep her from keep her alive. He gets cracked from behind. Who the hell could this be? A fortune for you, dear friend. Natasha has already said too much. It's Soul Crusher from one of the previous issues. I'll put the decks below because I can't remember the issue right now. 321, 319, 320, something. The secrets we've been keeping are not for the world to know. You should have joined us instead of resisting us because whoever sides with heaven or hell will always be my mortal enemies. And that's where we end this issue. Personally, I love Scorch issue number one as it was an introduction, but you get plenty of action how the team formed together. Scorch issue number two definitely ups the ante. We get a full out war. What's all about? I had a hell of a gangster time reading this. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. We begin this issue in the rural area in Ukraine where the man called Soul Crusher makes his base. For years he has tinkered weapons here, developed weapons able to destroy otherworldly beings on our planet. And as of late, he began drafting young, abandoned, and vulnerable teenage kids into his fight. Natasha and Odessa from issues number one and two. Old man tells Soul Crusher, you failed. The guy tells him, no, your plan failed, and Odessa got killed because of it. We need another path if we're going to win, so we should make them an offer, and I believe he's talking about making the Hell Spawns an offer. It's a traitorous alliance. It's a way to survive. He backhands him and this guy gets pissed. And the old man's like, no, fighting with these monsters is my life work. You come empty handed, no plague, no vile, nothing. And this guy's like, touch me again and I'll break your hand. You killed Odessa and now Natasha has plagues, quills in her body. Don't you get it? We're on the run because you're losing the touch of how powerful the enemy has become, old man. And we get all these pictures and portraits of these flashbacks telling the story. Spawn hasn't stood idle by by doing nothing. He's recruiting, building an army, doing things you used to do, old man. Every night you told us, you trained us, how to prepare against the forces of good and evil. Well, they're here. All those monsters you talked about, they mobilized. You said you free us from their influence. That was your goal. And, he, and the guy's like, that is still my goal. It's why we let you experiment on us because we still want to earth free from angels and demon. Well, now I know what I must do. Old man's like, you have, you don't have the will to do what needs to be done. And Soul Crusher's like, you're wrong. I learned for the best. Sergi. Oh, so that's his real name. That's right. It is his real name. Sergi. That's Soul Crusher. And he burns the old man in life. And he has his map, this GPS. And he's like, we need help, Natasha. Go get what's inside of you out or find a way to use it. Thus setting Natasha and Sergi on a collision course with those they may need to join or they may need to destroy, which is the Scorch. And they're on the, the black flag, the jet, the Raven from the previous issue. And their new mission is we have to extract Reaper and lay waste to everything else. If we're lucky, we'll find clues on how to return and get you guys to our own time. Cause Gunslinger wants to go back to his time. So does Medieval. So inside the Raven, Medieval spawn, and the Redeemer, they have this ball that they got to push out the plane. So they push the ball out the plane, but Medieval pushes the ball too hard. And now he's in a free fall. What is inside that ball, by the way? And it, we're going to find out soon enough. And Gunslinger Spawn tells Ruby, they don't save him yet. Give him a few seconds. Might teach the ball a lesson. So in the building, which I presume where the ball's going to be dropped into. The building they say they house is a daddy bone palace, which centuries ago was used by the church to interrogate enemies where screams still reverberate in shadowed halls now we see this this guy getting his blood pumped dry by whatever what are the shit are those things right there with the wings they look hideous now it appears a hero named reaper is to oh they're pumping his blood dry they're pumping his blood dry the body this one of the aim what are the what, i don't know what the hell those are this body courses with anti-spawn blood Drain all of it. All of it must be removed. Keep him awake. Don't allow him to go in the shop. The buyer is using it for fuel. He can't have it tainted. If we keep it pure, the dead zones will finally be open and we can return to our Heavenly Father. Oh, so these are angels that are starved. No God to sustain them, so they've lost their once glorious beauty. Reaper's heart suddenly stops and with its mind spirals away and we go into a flashback, I presume, where he wakes up. Where am I? And she spawns like, in Japan, of course, on a mission with me. Remember, we found what we needed. The spawn called me back. You said you can handle the rest, says she spawn. Why? Why did you lie, Eddie? He noticed it. He tells himself 
he should have heard and this is a callback to spawn issue number 309 but he allowed himself to give in to his instincts it was a fleeting moment of admiration for she spawns physical beauty is that she spawn right there oh gosh hell to the dog seconds that by acting like that a human distracting him making him forget why they had come to japan in the first place i was just gonna wonder why were you in japan and because he acted like a normal person he is now a prisoner debris falls into his eye instead of a needle reaper snapping reaper back to the present a crack in the roof breaking open the roof splits in comes medieval spun you cut into my body centuries ago tell god he'll not touch another one of us and I'm not sure they're gonna give a damn if Reaper dies or not. So the bomb drops in and it opens up. And the angels that look hideous are like, your weapon has failed you. Red menacing eyes sissing open. No, instead it's about to reveal something much worse than explosion. Now the angels appendages begin to contort and twist. They turn into guns and they start blasting away at Plague Spawn. The real reason why the heroes went to Russia. He's a machine of murder and death that the Scorch hunted captured and now unleashed upon God's agents. The firepower they unleashed upon him, it's useless against him. Plague Spawn has no logic, no reason, just devastation. So Jessica's commanding Redeemer and the gang to keep going for these guys are your specialty. Lead the way. Without God, these angels are cowards because they lost their beauty and they're weak. Where's the boy, says Medieval Spawn. Where's Reaper? There, by Plague. And Plague is just overlooking Reaper and Jude. This guy looks like he's about to do something. But Plague is like, with no other angels alive, the creature, Plague Spawn, still needs a new host. Reaper is just another angel to him. So they get ready to withdraw their gun and they get ready to kill him. But like all diseases, Plague needs a body to spread its sickness. A body to build off of. A body to kill while making itself stronger. And before they can unleash fire, Plague Spawn goes to work on Redeem. Demon. And Pie faces Gunslinger Spawn. Medieval Spawn tries to go in. And they're fighting carefully and just as I kill it before it bonds to Reaper. Eddie must live. Redeemer knows that, that the fact is vital to everyone standing in this room for he has a sense of what is to come. For Reaper has a destiny to save the lives of those Redeemer cannot. But first, Eddie Frank has to live. A blast goes in, therefore demobilizing Plague Spawn. Miraculously, Plague Spawn is suddenly dropped to his knees and stunned unconscious before he gets 10 feet. So this brother was grown, this is some insane power. So Natasha tells him, along with Soul Crusher, listen, my boss has an offer he wants to make. And Soul Crusher's like, I don't know, they, can, they can't get past their arrogance. Gunster's like, that's right, we're not interested in your damn offer. And she spawns like, I don't bargain with a gun pointed at me. So Natasha's like, you're wrong. That thing he shot, it's in me, it's Quills. They're changing me and he can help because he's not the man you met before. So he removes his mask and he introduces himself. My name is Sergi, the original Soul Crusher who worked with Black Flag trying to extract your symbiotes from you, thinking you were Earth's enemies, not those you fight. And Gus is like, man, we're wasting our time with this bull giant. She Spawn wants to hear him out. The other Soul Crusher, for years he trained us. We heard him talk all about you. Heard the partners he had deals with he made. You're right, they want to destroy you. We don't. We'd rather give you what you want instead. Instead of fighting, why don't we help each other get what we want? Because others are building machines to open the dead zones. I believe they'll actually blow up the planet instead, says Sergi. So what's your offer? Sergi's like, help me save Natasha and I'll make it so no one else is ever a victim of this vileness again. And you, you get to leave here, go back to your real homes, your families where people are missing you, where they need you. Leave earth to the humans. Let us control our own destinies, devout of heaven or hell's interference. And everyone wants to go back and this appeals to everyone. So Sergi's like, questions? Lots. But one for now, how were you able to take out Plague Spawn so easily? Well, I'll tell you, because that's not Plague Spawn. If it were, we all be dead. And that's where we end this issue of The Scorched, issue number three. I, oh God, mystery, but I love the story moving forward. And personally, I enjoy the fact that Spawn is not in this issue, at least not yet. Though I would love to see a crossover with Hunt. I, I love how it highlights these guys coming together and what they all want and she spawn taking command. I, I think this is a really awesome read. Link in description if you want to add this comic book to your comic book collection. In this issue with the with the machine looking whatever it is with the tube and the blood of plague spawn remains he's taking a sample of that blood analyzing the data and the last time the scorch were seen they were in the castle of the undead angels near the border that's where they had reaper and they were and those angels that were falling from heaven that looked like hideous shit monsters were just 
take it as blood to use his blood to open up the dead zones and i believe that's where the blood of that plague spawn is at so now with their former enemy soul crusher they returned to their base she spawned gunslinger spawn medieval spawn i imagine spawn is going to be there too later on they all returned to their base with soul crushers soul crusher told them something machines were being made machines that were using fuel from anti-spawn and the hail spawn serum and we see this machine loading up but we don't know what's going to go on their sentinel beings coded with one goal to open the dead zone on their own failing to do that that their default is to kill spawn the scorch of every human locked on earth and he's locked oh this sentinel looks mean and vicious like a spawn x-men kind of hybrid you know they're called sin devourers no one knows their exact numbers but each has their own mission the question is who built them why do they want to leave the earth and is there a connection to the soul crusher himself these will all need to be answered very soon and it turns out this guy is unit number is unit 89 and he's reporting that there's residue for both heaven and hell that were here and he's going to continue his hunt in the scorch headquarters spawn is pissed that she spawned for bringing soul crusher back to the headquarters everyone is sensing spawns rage and they restrain him and soul is like listen to what i'm saying and stop letting your emotions drive you we came for a truce one that'll return these spawns back to where they came from but you're not going to listen to me if threats and power is the only thing you understand then i'll speak your language and he blasts spawn to the back with this beam and spawns like okay all right i will tell you guys something the moment soul crusher opens his mouth he's lying he needs to prepare for war not piss around with his kind what we gotta do is let's retrieve reaper and get the hell up out of here damn it al he helped against plague spawn we can use the info because soul crusher promised them to get them all back into the timeline if he helped them with natasha because natasha is infected with the plague spawn symbiote and it's just boiling inside of her infecting her so spawn is like i'm with your con soul crusher and he tells the scorch and tells the other gang it's what they do they do that they lie to get what they want and gunslinger is like he really wants to go back to his time he's like take your hands off him boy you're not in charge i'm like you so it's like to get back to our real homes if he can help with that i want to hear what he has to say now back away and spawns like all right gunslinger is this what it's gonna be what you gonna do you gonna scout me and the thing with these two spawns is, is that they are not just two sides of the same coin they're actually the same side of the coin they both have grit they both have will and neither of them is about to give an inch and they go all out with each other gunslinger stab spawn spawn clobbers gunslinger and they're fighting each other and gunslinger's like look at you man you forgot who the enemy is and spawns like i haven't forgotten at all i'm trying to figure who my new ones might be and let the chains rip out and with that spawn lets the chains come out spawn puts out a display who the reinforce who the alpha spawn is <laughs> or more like alpha dog and he's wiping the floor with gunslinger though he'll find out now that gunslinger isn't as weak as spawn's been told i mean that's what we've all been told i thought gunslinger was the weakest one but apparently he ain't as weak as you thought he is and just like that gunslinger don't relent and spawns like you had enough yet boy and jessica's like dude calm down you're out of your mind what's wrong with you we don't need this right now and then a gunshot goes up in the air from soul crusher i didn't come here for this shit we're wasting time let's get to it natasha doesn't have much time she's dying the quills the prototype plague that's stuck in her is eating her body trying to bond with her to take over her we came offering truce instead this is what we got so yes i can help you guys but i need you first to help her and spawns like all right get the child i'll watch soul crusher soul crusher's like what you think i want to hurt her she's like me an orphan raised by that old man who made the suit we're trying to survive instead he stole our childhood that's why i killed the old man that's why i killed the bastard and medieval spawn picks up natasha because medieval spawn lived in a time of honor regardless which side you fought on watching the weak and innocent suffer was only for the wretched priest experiments on medieval when he was younger hoping to convert him into an acolyte a saint they could control instead they scarred his body and hurt him every day he was theirs but he learned their magic he didn't think it was real at first but when he found it was he studied about it in the shadows away from his captors until he learned enough to be able to turn those spells on his own masters and that's how he's healing the natasha right now and as she makes her recovery the reaper from the last issue is now all masked up now tells him that she'll live but only for a short while and we go into a flashback of what this monologue is what he's explaining because like this young girl there's never been a time when the vials of power have been mixed so thoroughly i heard them the angels as they experimented on me in the last issue they talked about an impending civil war about to wash over our planet a war where prior allegiances will mean nothing where spawn will fight spawn angels will kill angels and man will continue to slaughter one another some will bow and serve to the new king leading to war i wonder if that's a reference to king spawn and how 
how they're making him king. But make no mistake, this war is coming. Spawn versus spawn, says she spawn. Some of us will become traitors, not some. Just one, says Reaper. Well, one of us is already treacherous, so now this standoff of which spawn is already the treacherous one to betray, which spawn is going to poison, which spawn is going to destroy all others. And Media was like, if what they say is true, that there is a Judas amongst us, stop with your vagueness and point him out, Reaper, and I will strike him down. And Gunslinger pulls out his gun like, oh yeah? And who the hell made you, Sheriff, boy? And spawns like, the betrayal hasn't happened yet. Guess we're all innocent till we're proven guilty, right? Says Gunslinger. Spawns like, no, what I was going to say is, we're all guilty our past and the paths we chose to live now those choices are coming back to haunt us so we're not all saints here so tell me how clear is your conscience any of you any of you my past has been haunting me for years i bet each of you could say the same and she's bonds like yeah we've all made decisions we have to live with ow don't worry about it the question isn't what do we do in our past it's what we're gonna do about it today. It's why we're all here, right? And it just won't be their enemies betraying them. It could be anyone. It could be even the one closest to you. And that's the thing in life. But even sometimes your closest friends are your enemies. That's the weirdest thing. But anyways, let's go back to the review. Friends, families, loved ones. Every one of them is capable of falling temptation. And we see that Sentinel spawn outside their headquarters and so Tasha's like they hear outside the sin devour opens its mouth for the metal giant is executing the only thing is created and that is to devour a beam of fire goes in and it has begun he broke into their headquarters their past will not be forgiven and their future is not promised for the scorch will be hunted and a Judas lies within their mist and that's where we end this issue of the scorched issue number four I thought this was a great read I love the tension and the stand up between the hell spawn I I mean, come on now. You really think they were going to... If it, if this book was written in the way that they work together and gel together just like that or without any kind of friction, I'm not in. But with this and the friction as a traitor amongst them, who is the traitor? Oh my gosh, dude. I am in. I'm all the way in. I love the fact that Spawn didn't get another appearance until a couple issues later to let the other Hell Spawns get their shine in the light. But I definitely dug this book and I'm definitely looking forward to do the to do the rest of the reviews or to, the, to do the other issues. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. We begin this issue where we left off in the last issue. The Sin Devour Machine attacks their base and she spawn, Natasha, spawn, Redeemer, Gunslinger spawn, and gang are under attack. From she spawns perspective as a military leader, she was trained to take responsibility and snuff out the threat and there was a major traitor amongst them. Because in the last issue, there was a Judas amongst them, but who is the Judas? But we can't worry about that right now. This threat is coming in all directions as she rescues Natasha and uses life from her hand as a guide to get up out from under the rubble. Sin Devour is going to work on these hell spawns and is doing what it's programmed to do, that is to destroy the Scorched, kill the angels, kill the demons, and any refugees stuck on this planet. Then it will open the dead zones and lay waste to all in the name of eternity. In order to do that, it needs to feed off the energies of both hell spawn and anti spawn alike. The beast is communicating with someone over the telecom as a response to Unit 89. The real question is, who built these machines because it was not only programmed for speed, but to anticipate their movements and their attacks from the hell spawns. I enjoy that this is from Jessica Pre She Spawn's point of view. She notices that if this thing is purely machine, it must have a weakness. She's right. Sin Devour is ordered to engage in open test one. The target for the test is Spawn. He shows Spawn why he's called the Sin Devour by cutting his razor sharp teeth into Al Simmons' shoulder. The machine knows that Spawn feels pain and that he will need to drain his power supply to repair it. Let's not forget about the others. Medieval Spawn wants some of that smoke too. Over here, coward! Fight someone that also has metal, says Medieval Spawn. He slashes the tube that feeds into its neck. The Scorch expect this beast to fall back to which they will open a counterattack, but it doesn't fall back. Fall back, nada, says the machine. With one crushing blow to earth, a shockwave shatters the ground, causing the Scorch to go back into the ground. He is programmed to extract their energy, and he intends on doing just that. Soul Crusher is down. Gunslinger Spawn grabs a weapon, his adversary drops. Everyone fall back, says the Redeemer, as they blast off trying to hold off this thing. Jessica Priest aids Natasha, and she tells her that the veils on the machine armor have to be destroyed. That's its weakness, says Natasha. Medieval's magic quelled her pain, 
whatever poison Plague Spawn injected her with continues to ravage her body. Jessica Priest, aka She Spawn, calls Redeemer for cover as she goes to the vials per Natasha's instructions and tears those things out. Once removed, Gunslinger and Redeemer attack first to keep this machine off balance. As many battles have proven throughout the Hell Spawns, they must follow with the second wave of attack and medieval spawn is that second wave. The blow he delivers is so massive, it sends the giant flying upward. That's where Reaper comes in with the third and final wave. Slash! You got to love how a team comes together, but one question remains. Who sent this freaking machine? None of them have a freaking answer for it just yet. Spawn figures that whoever dispatched it used it as a recon to report and to test the team. Whoever sent the machine used it to help them prepare for a much bigger war. It's a theory to say the least, but a very scary theory at that. Today's victory came at a huge cost. Natasha goes to Sergi to aid him. He says they knew that it would come to this and the Sin Devourer will be released. Sergi tells Natasha that she needs to make sure that they know they being the hell spawns and anti spawn. Jessica Priest wonders, what the heck do we need to know? Natasha tells him that there is a man who knows him. He has files on the entire group. He's the original Soul Crusher, and for a time, they work together to design and construct the Sin Devourer machine to use in their unholy war. They each thought they were doing it for the side of good. Spawn asks if she knows who the other man is. Who is this man? They never spoke his name, says Natasha. They only referred to him as the buyer, or simply called him K. He had incredible wealth, and he wears an eye patch. And she goes into a little backstory. The general only cared about wanting to replicate a watered down prototype of the plague's armor, hoping to wrap his army in the symbiote. Soul Crusher had a better idea. He thought, why just cover the body when we could control the host instead? The buyer, who she's talking about, funded most of it. But his interest wasn't in how to wear or become a hellspawn, but how to destroy them himself. He saw himself as a revolutionary. He wanted something that could destroy everything that had enough of your guys' juices coursing through it that it could track all of you. And she spot has a revelation. And this and this is the same man that convinced the starving angels to join his plan? Yes, says Natasha. Redeemer is like, and that human was able to capture and hold prisoner the Reaper and knew the ancient way of how to extract the anti-spawn serum from his veins? Yes, says Natasha. So Spawn's like, so he wants to control us, control the dead zones and kill everything in between. Yes, his entire side does, says Natasha. Genocide, that's what it is. She lurches forward and the poison serum streaming inside of her begins to shut down her organs as she vomits. Because as much as the doctors and scientists wish for its success, the cloning of plague fluids in a human will never be compatible. Ain't no way semen is gonna gel with a human body. Maybe it was like she's dying, the poison's too strong. As the scorched rush to help this woman, knowing time is of the essence, they are being watched too. Behind, in the shadows, crawls one of their own breed. That breed is Plague Spawn, the original version, not the Russian replica, not the one that Soul Crusher destroyed earlier. What does this Plague Spawn want? Earlier, Soul Crusher has said if the thing that he shot earlier in the last issue was the real Plague, we'd all be dead right now. That wasn't a hyperbole. And this Plague Spawn knows that its brethren, the other plague spawn, it was destroyed by a soul crusher. He senses it and he feels it. The quills the prototype shot into Natasha are like homing devices, calling the original plague spawn to reunite with those pieces stolen from him from the buyer. Even the animals know who their enemies are. And we end this issue in Romania, Dawn, where this guy wakes up, vampire. He wonders where his men are and why aren't they here? As he scans the room, he doesn't even know where he is. His last memories were of Dubai at a reception for a families of wealthy rulers from the country, those he's been partners with for years in oil, textile, and manufacturing industries, where their exploitation of human resources have made all of them obscenely rich. But now he's here, locked inside some strange room, and the answer, someone is brave enough to drug this brother and kidnap him, the king of vampires, to somewhere personal. He gazes onto the streets, he realizes he's been transported a thousand miles away. Then the faintest drop in the room's temperature tells him he is not alone and someone else is in the room with him. And who is that person? That person is Hunt. And Hunt looks at him like he's got business to discuss. Grab a chair. I've been told you got a confession you like to make about the type of people you associate with. And before you think about lying, I want you to know some of those people poisoned me and I'd like a cure. So here's a choice. 
give me what I want. Either way, I'm walking out this room. The question is, will you? And that's where we end this issue, Scorched issue number five. I think this issue has the right mix of action and story with the team of hellbound heroes fighting a new enemy and learning new secrets concerning their hellish war. I definitely think this issue is gangster. I am obviously all in on it. I thought it was one of the better Scorched issues in my personal opinion. Not to mention this McFarlane cover that I was holding up. It's pretty super gangster cover to look at too. Before we begin with this issue, we're just going to do a quick summary. A surprise attack by a cybernetic creature called the Sin Devourer sends the team scrambling for answers. Soul Crusher joins the fray to help, but Spawn has his doubts about it. We begin this issue where we left off in the last issue. Hawk came in demanding confessions from Blood, the Vampire King right there. He isn't someone you give orders to. Having played second fiddle to Spawn for so long, you would think Daniel Kilgore would have learned who he can and cannot push against their own will. That lack of understanding will get him killed. Kurt tells Danny to jump and get out the way of the attack, but Danny doesn't want Kurt in his head. Hunt tells Blood, I'll keep this up all day if you want. I came looking for a cure. Give me that cure and I'll walk away. Blood is like, please, bruh, and backhands Hunt. They won't let you, says the Vampire King. Whoever poisoned you did it for a reason, and it won't get undone. The men who did it are billionaires. They control everything and get everything. When they come to burn Earth, they wipe out everything. Open your eyes, Hunt. We're on the same side. It sure doesn't appear that way with the bra going on. Kurt tells his brother to check the halls and make sure no one is coming as he fights to get the cure he is looking for. He knows the Vampire King is working for someone and he doesn't appreciate being lied to, at least from his perspective. We get a flashback of Haunt from King Spawn issue number one. We did do a review on that as well as the first story arc issues number one through six. I'm not the enemy, stop being blind, says the Vampire King. Haunt is not trying to hear all that and punches him where he stands. That's a pretty cool looking panel how he punches his face to the ground like that. Haunt believes blood joined together to sniff out the threats and eliminate those who are threats to their cause. Haunt believes he is one of those threats. He concludes that's why blood, or whoever he's affiliated with, poisoned him. Blood confesses he didn't poison him. Blood confesses he didn't poison him. They poisoned you because they knew you knew Al Simmons. You knew Spawn. I know more than that, says Hunt, and pistol whips him so hard that one of his fangs comes out. Lydia was sent by someone, says Hunt, girlfriend from King Spawn issue number one. She was sent by someone that's haunting us. You are working for the buyer, Blood. Where is he? Receiving no answers, Hunt finds hidden folders inside a stuffed suitcase. <laughs> happens the folder containing names and locations of both empty targets and lawyer recruits but hunt is not given the luxury or time to figure that out a sin devourer enters the scene and he gets permission grants to obliterate hunt kurt concludes that this is an ambush daniel feels that something's off why send that sin devourer if he's already dying at the Scorch base outside of Russia, Medieval has transformed into Mark. He sifts through the wreckage from a destroyed Sin Devourer, searching for what clues to who might have sent that metallic monster. Mark is like, I need to find its operating system, and she spawns that it was communicating with someone. It might be recording our interactions as we speak. And Gunslinger's like, what about Natasha? How did she fit into this? Or Reaper? And what about that Soul Crusher? I just don't trust him. And Soul Crusher or Surge, he's like, good. And I don't trust you, cowboy. We ain't got time for this says Mark. Listen here boy, I ain't buying none of your pack of lies that you're here to help us cause the moment you showed up, that giant contraption showed up too. All that wreckage, that's what Gunslinger Spawn is saying to Surge. And Mark goes through the, the Sin Devourer and is like, hey man, if this is designed from a human body, then this is where the hippocampus would be. And Gunslinger's like, what the hell are you talking about? You talking that gibberish? It's not gibberish. The hippocampus stores memories. If these things were designed with that in mind, it could be where the black box is. It's memories. Moments later, when Mark gets his legs stuck, he attempts to pull it free, but he learns when he falls back that it's tamper-proof. Spawn has concerns about joining the squad anyway. They're raw, undisciplined, making him wonder if they have any value to him. He only tolerates she spawn Everyone else is a concern to him. She spawns like Medieval and Redeemer went with Reaper and Natasha. You think you can reverse their infection or what? Not our problem, says Spawn. At least it shouldn't be. It's absurd that the rest of you haven't figured it out yet. She Spawn blasts him just to get his attention, but she doesn't make any impact. Who do you think you are, says Jessica. You're right, there are problems, and one of them is a concern to us. Reaper says we have a traitor amongst us. I can't ignore that. And Medieval Spawn's like, then do your homework. Hell Spawns get their power from hell directly, like I did. Nyx handed you your powers, Jessica. Medieval had experiments on him, and Gunslinger barely has a fraction of the powers we got. 
got, even though Gunslinger may be the weakest health spawn, he's been showing that he's got some grit and some wit to him. Spawn is like, you're all hybrids, which makes all of you suspect. And Jessica's like, what does that exactly mean, Spawn? You put this team together, figure it out. In the meantime, there's a war to fight. And Sergi's like, so you're not gonna trust these people because they're not like you? Hmm. Well, that's some bull jive. Good luck recruiting them because no one's like you. You'll be alone. In fact, Spawn, we don't want to be like you. And Spawn gets mad. He's like, neither did I. But here I am, like it or not. And I don't trust you, Sergey. So don't even begin going there. And to be honest, I don't know what you are. And with the mere gesture, Spawn decides to test him to see what kind of pain he can endure. He can endure. He opens up a portal that leads to the black, where nothing exists, nothing except darkness. Some are appalled by this, others not so much. Mark is like, dude, that's crazy. Gunster is like, man, I'm with Spawn. I didn't trust that mofo anyway. And Jessica is like, I just don't get it. Why are you even here if you think we're unworthy? I don't have a choice. Bullshit, Spawn. You can leave whenever you want. And he's like, yeah, you're right, I can't. And he just ups and leaves. And Gunslinger's like, well, if he doesn't want to lead us, I'm happy to step up and leave. Jessica's like, well, settle down, Gunslinger. Just give us some space and patience. Patience, says Gunslinger. You think those folks that want us dead is going to give us some patience? You going to give us some time? Girl, you should have thought about this before you put this group together. Well, look, it's easy, says Jessica. We just get rid of the traitor. That'll be easy. But where, where, where do you think you're going, Gunslinger? To drag Spawn's ass back here. Mark is like, guys, heads up those creatures weren't just hunting us they were scanning us and he unlocks a device they've got a hard drive in it that's got 3.5 million data points on you jessica and 5.2 million data points on you gunslinger they're trying to piece together a historical profile on all of us to find out our weakness and gunslinger's like man that doesn't make any damn sense and you guys are speaking some bullshit i can't even understand she spawns like is their data accurate i don't know yet says mark it might be still tracking. Give me that thing. She smashes it. Mark's all pissed. I was looking for a signal. Something that gives us a clue where they might be. Jessica's like, I got a family. And the less they know about me, the better. Gunslinger totally agrees with that. Because he knows what happens when they find out who your family is. And that's referencing Gunslinger Spawn. Which you could check out the review on all the Gunslinger Spawn. All the first story arc on that as well. Back in Romania, Hans is getting molly walked by the Sin Devourer. Sin Devourer's like, I will complete this mission. But Blood, you better not betray the buyer already. And Blood's like, I don't need your help. BS, I got a job to do. And that is to annihilate the target. And that target is Hunt. And the reason why he's pursuing Hunt, because he's the one that's been poisoned. They need to gather what effect is having on his body before his body gives out. And that data will help them conquer both Heaven and Hell's warriors. Simply put, Hunt is just collateral damage on this point. And as Cinderval lunges out the window, he steps on his chest like, Boom, son! Tell your mama to save me a plate. And one thing that Blood knows about this sadistic world is not the demons and the angels that Blood fears most. It's the depravity of humans. It's their acts upon their fellow man that has kept him and his vampiric clan hidden in the shadows. Sin Devourer tells Hunt, Soon you will be called soon to serve. To serve your true nature where you will leave Spawn and his kind and fight with us. We have your cure. Not that we dictate how long you have to live, huh? But we need more like you. More we can convert. To show us your loyalty, find Soul Crusher, and then bring him to us. Bring him to us before they taint him too, says Sin Devour, whoever's controlling him. As Sergi gets into the all black with Spawn, Spawn's like, I've been waiting for I've been waiting for you. And Sergi's like, what's this? It's limbo. Your new prison. I, does Spawn know what the heck is going on? That's why he's doing this and he's not trusting his teammates? Or does Spawn have a more sinister plan in mind? But this is where we end this issue. Personally, I got some question marks here. Did I dig the issue? Of course I dug the issue, man. This is fun. But at the same time, this is the end of the first story arc. I absolutely love this issue. And I'm looking forward to Scorch issue number seven, as well as the other Spawn issues. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Just a quick reminder of what's going on before we get into this issue. While Hunt is searching for a cure to the poison racing through his body, the vampire lord, known as Blood, offers up a solution, a location. Meanwhile, the Scorch team deal with the aftermath of their battle with the Sin Devourer. So their new goal, or their goal now, is to keep hunting the Sin Devourers so they might soon find their secret financier known as Kay. In her quest to form this team, a small army of those willing to stand at Evil's doorstep, She Spawn had made each one of them a promise. 
You help me get what I want, and I'll make sure you get what matters most to you. So for a gunslinger spot, it's to get back to his own timeline. For Medieval, he wants to find those who experiments on his body, and Redeemer needs to find Reaper. Yet one question still remains. Why is she spawn doing all this, asked Reaper? So after Redeemer's question, we get to see that Natasha lays on the table as her skin's bubbling from the from the poison of Plague Spawn. But Reaper is stuck on the prophecy Redeemer has seen. Who will betray the Scorched? And he believes it's not gonna be Jessica. And Redeemer's like, why do you think Jessica is not gonna betray? I mean, she left me in Japan. I'm sure she had her reasons, but don't worry, it ain't gonna be her. I mean, it's a dozen strategies of military, not I would say otherwise, but she had her reasons for leaving you. I don't think she's gonna be the Judas or the betrayer of the Scorch. Though Natasha laying on the table needs their attention because she won't survive much longer. Given the amount of poison that's coursing through her veins, she needs their help. Her mind's fighting and panicking with all this poison and clay going on. It's not really a panic, it's more like an exorcism. An exorcism of what? Like a disease manifesting itself. Plague's poison has been replicating inside Natasha's breeding itself back into existence and she's screaming out help and place bars going out for the attack or whatever it manifested to and they try to contain it contain it that's not how plague spawn works you don't contain it you have to destroy it. and from what it appears right here plague looks to appear to to impale redeemer meanwhile at an unmarked compound near empty sands new mexico they're outside the base gunslinger and mark are outside and gunslinger's like i can't see her no more good that means she's made it aside you got you ready to give her cover gunslinger's like okay tell me one so mark does tell gunslinger when and gunslinger hits his target taking out a main electrical transformer so what else i gotta shoot to put him in the dark says gunslinger inside gunslinger's shop now has their building on power reserve. You know, the second jader is also down. So now they're losing power. By the time they realize they're losing power and it goes dark or it's about to go dark, they see her and it's too late and she spawn goes to work, wrapping her hair around one soldier like an anaconda and causes him one of their life. And she asks her, I'm looking for the one called K. Where is he? And one of the soldiers said, well, if you're killing my boy over here, I ain't gonna die on that account. He's down the hall. Gunslinger, use the Northeast entrance. It'll be clear, understand, says she spawn. And Gunslinger's like, okay, I'm on my way now. You gonna be there too? Though still new to modern tech, Gunslinger, cause he came from the 1800s, he does understand how ambush works. And she spawn says, no, but I'm sending you help. He should have been there by now. And Gunslinger sends, senses another. And he turns around, he's like, whoa, whoa, don't sneak up on me. And, and Hunt's like, whoa, big guy, she spawn said you're a bit skittish. She sent you? Yeah, she did. After I told her how to find this facility, she said you guys could use some backup. Jessica Priest tells Javier, yeah, he's telling the truth. Don't worry about it. The truth that Hunt and his brother Kurt extracted from blood lore the vampires from the previous issue. During his abduction, files were found detailing covert sites under the control of this mysterious individual, Okay, Now they all need to fulfill their part of this plan. And she, Spawn, and Kurt go in. As they go in and they pass through the wall, she uses a stolen access card and the soldiers sneak up from behind her. I wouldn't do that if I were you. She turns around and judges their formation. The whole way shape is forcing them to clump together. And because she's low on ammo, it makes it easy for her to just to, to do one shot and take out all three of them. While Kurt attacks in his own way, triggering a massive heart attack by going inside and just squeezing his heart. But the alarm goes off and she asks Mark to disable it. He is on it. She spawned and Kurt pushed forward. What the hell is all this? She asks. It's a manufacturing plant devoted to sin devourers. Controlled by Bill Billionaires who use their massive wealth to work outside the laws, boundaries, or rules of any government. K, whoever that is, operates in his own shadow world. With enough influence to gather information and resources needed to be able to stalk hell spawns and angels while refining his war machine so that he may cleanse the earth of both. And Kurt's like, do we destroy him? Not yet. Back at our fortress, Mark got into the brain of one of these. They're being fed in real-time information of each of us, the entire Scorch team, and dozens of others. It's analyzing, discovering who we are, who we love, and what makes us vulnerable. Taking information and cross-referencing that data by downloading every possible checkpoint. They'll try to slaughter us, or the world we live in, and the world we love. And when it gets its matches, suddenly, stunned, Jessica is confronted by the reality that they've been able to analyze and construct her entire lifespan from her troubled childhood to military boot camp with unwanted attention and the way she dealt with it. She also sees images of freshly minted assassins 
her assassinations that she become. One of them is of Simmons, and the other Nick's her dearest friend. But the image that makes her shudder is the one of her daughter, and she is appalled. And she's like, "Oh hell no!" Mark loses contact with her, but Mark is not left to do anything, probably because he's waiting on Jessica's orders. So they're like, "Wait, what's her order? We're here at the northeast corner, right?" And it doesn't make much sense to him. So all of a sudden, with her whole history exposed, Jessica needs to download everything in her file. Then he erase the mainframe if possible. Kurt's like, we don't have time for this, Jessica. What are you doing? I need to destroy all this intel they're gathering. It'll destroy all of us. But then let's burn this place down and wipe everything out. I mean, right now, right? I mean, let's do that. But unfortunately, and Mark does have, and Kurt does have a point, but unfortunately, Jessica messed with the data feed going to each sin devourer, setting off an eternal security feed instead. They're coming to life. I erase what I need to know. Let's go. And they go on the attack. Intrusion devourer has witnessed the she spawns and all the spawns and his order is to terminate. Kurt's astral body isn't in serious dangers as debris will pass through it. She spawn is not going to be as fortunate. Mark, mission accomplished. Bogey's on our tail. You have visuals soon? Then get ready to teleport. And Mark gets the orders and Hunt's like, I'll take out the legs and Gunslinger's like, I'll make sure they can't see. I'm opening now, Mark, says Jessica at the portal. Get in there. Hunt and Gunslinger do their part, but she spawn still needs a few more seconds to be able to make her portal functional for everyone. Her team gives her that. Sin Devour goes down for the count and this is playing out very epically for the moment the group is safe but jessica now wonders about some others those she hasn't heard back from in too long of a time redeemer and reaper and she sees what happens to them based on the accounts of plague spawn she put this team together hoping their numbers would protect one another tonight that's felt now everything's at risk as plague spawn takes the pasha and he is on his way out looking at him like what you gonna do about it and that's where we end this issue i'm gonna keep my review on this one very nice short and sweet i absolutely dug it this was a definite way to kick off a new story arc and i'm in on it i mean to me probably this is probably one of the better series of sports issue number seven if not the best in my personal opinion link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with all that being said before we get into this issue, I'm just going to summarize the previous issue. Jessica and Hunt's brother, Kurt, have infiltrated a base operated by the mysterious K. While inside, Jessica discovers info that puts the whole team in jeopardy. So we go into this panel with Soul Crusher in this dark void. You know, while she spot and her group piece together the actions of the unpredictable symbiote called Plague, a young Ukraine soldier, Soul Crusher, has been abandoned by Spawn into the dark recesses of Limbo. But for what purpose though? So he knows Simmons can clearly connect to other worlds. So why will Simmons open up the dead zones? Your kind will survive no matter what, says Soul Crusher. Why are you treating me like this? I told you I help. Something then catches Soul Crusher's attention. A small light followed by the sound of voices growing louder. And they come from ghosts and it's Natasha, Gunslinger, Spawn, all talk about they have to find Natasha because Soul Crusher was hunting it. And they're betting that the girl was just bait. That's all she was. Now it's going to cost her her life. Soul Crusher is not liking how this is played out. They spent their childhood together brainwashed by the original Soul Crusher, finally escaping the orphanage that imprisoned them. In Russia, they had to make another escape from the soldiers that chased them. He promised her freedom, freeing her from all their suffering and spawning murders. You thought that would be easy, Sergi? And he's like, no, I thought, I mean, I knew who my enemies were and who I could be trusted. But Spawn's like, nah, bro, then you're more naive than I thought. You're owed nothing. This is war. You make mistakes, it'll cost you every time. And you'll put people you love in danger. You want to destroy your enemies? Stop making others like Natasha easy targets. He shoots at Spawn. And it ain't doing nothing to him. You burnt your father alive, said Spawn. What do you think would happen next? He wasn't my father, said Sergi. Well... His money, his power, people like him always have others that'll pick up right after him. So you didn't do anything. Spawn shoved Sergi under the black waters of the Limbo's Abyss. You want to breathe the air, real soldiers? Act like one. I can't afford imposters, says Spawn. You want to join us? Stop doubting, stop questioning, and just follow orders. It's time, time to learn if you'll ever be a real soldier. So he's like, what is this? Is this a test? The hell Spawn has left. And you know what? The boy's lost. Who's there as he's just stuck in this darkness of limbo? Spawn just looking at him. Meanwhile, deep in the Carpathian Mountains between Russia and Ukraine, a transformation of flesh and spirit is already far underway with Natasha. The poison cursing through her veins by a bright product of plague's quills, stabbing her body a thousand times. Now that she's been stabbed and morphed, I don't know if she's fully merged or bonded with the symbiote, she, it, 
plague is hungry. Plague needed a host, someone to meld with, and energy to feed off of. When it completes its transformation, plague has a being that it can communicate with. I can take your sickness. You know, the phrase. So after the transformation completes, I'm not sure it's fully bonded with the symbiote yet. Plague is like, I can take your sickness. I can make you whole again. That phrase, whole again, it's the secret to every hell spun as all of them are missing a piece of a fragment of their soul lost during their journey into hell. Plague intends to find that hole. Natasha lost her lover to this war, becoming collateral damage when he attempted to steal Plague from Karl Christian. And this going back to issue number one and two. Her friend Odessa died too. Plague wants to evolve Natasha, wants to improve her. And like every Hellspawn before that evolution comes with the insatiable need, the hunger for revenge. Below the war of motor barrels across the desert floor. Now we go back into this panel where she, Spawn, Haunt, and Gunslinger are riding along the way on a search and rescue mission for Natasha. Back in the lab though or whatnot, Redeemer and Reaper are, Reapers are obviously, you know, impaled and hurt. And these teammates took severe damage in the previous issue. Reaper calls out for She Spawn. What? No, don't worry about She Spawn, says one of them. No, no, Redeemer's talking. About that's not what he wants. What he's saying is, we cannot trust She Spawn. That's his tone right there. So is She Spawn possibly the Judas that they were talking about? So back on the ride with She Spawn and Kurt, or Haunt, we have to find Soul Crush to save ourselves. That's what Sin Devourer said, says Kurt to Haunt. Whether that's true, time will tell. But for now, fighting and poisoning himself, that's what he wants to cure is his own poison. He'll determine if that truth is true or if it's BS or whatnot. Meanwhile, this spiked up plague symbia attacks her tires and they won't be granted that time because now it's time to get down with the get down. And Kurt was right. Natasha is crucial to the survivor, unfortunately. But whether she's the Judas or not, that is to be determined. A cunning, cruel animal who laid in wait, knowing the scorch would move in packs. Leave her alone, says Natasha, or I'll wipe you, or I'll wipe you, I swear. A sound like a nail dragging across a chalkboard builds in intensity, becoming what can only be identified as laughter as Natasha in she spawn in she spawn play form. I don't know why I said she spawn play form, it just sounds cool, but it's actually play spawn form. He murders and looks at her like in a menacing, imposing manner. Hmm. Team says she spawn. It hasn't bonded yet. She spawn knows if Plague Bond does bond to Natasha, they'll lose Natasha. So how do you kill a creature but not the girl? Their only hope is to strip off the semen before it rends them all apart. And each second it it fights them, it's more of a chance they're gonna end. They're gonna lose their lives this battle, to this battle right here. So they have to act fast. And Plague Spawn is already has the upper hand on this battle, as we can see. Haunt is like, keep it occupied. I have an idea. Hunt's end game is simple. Get near the symbiote, then start acting exactly like a plague himself. He grows claws, spikes, wants to shred the monster to its core. After that, he intends to grab Natasha and find where, where they've hidden Soul Crusher. You cocky bitch, he says, hoping the kid might know a cure for what's killing Hunt with each passing heartbeat. There's a fine line between being cocky and being confident, right? Right now, Plague is displaying both. Hunt passes through hell's rejected symbiote like the beast skin in translucent water. If Malboja had known what this monster would be capable of, hell's lore would have never discarded into the flames of Hades like a piece of disposable trash. Damn, I thought this Plague Spawn was more like Plague Spawn, but not elemental where you could just transport a haunt into a portal though, you know? Though, perhaps it was best he did because this Hell Spawn symbiote would have killed its lord because Al, before Al Simmons ever did. And that's true, Al Simmons did kill Moboja by decapitating his head. So no, it's operating more like a virus spreading and replicating wherever it can. Haunt thought it was more fail, but it's acting like an elemental. Is it trying to affect us, says Haunt? Yes, it is. And if it's to be stopped, it has to be stopped now. So Gunslinger unloads some necroplasmic, necro dip bullets that have some effect. And it's not gonna put it down for the count permanently, but whatever the science of it behind it may be, Gunslinger knows when its necro bullets come into contact with this black necro being that the combo appears to be quite painful. Painful enough to bring it momentarily down to its knees. It's not dead, it's just getting a second win. But Gunslinger's like, yeah, but it's still feeding on that girl, so I've got to get that skin off her now. By flaying this son of a bitch! So I was like, whoa, chill, like, where's your chill at, bro? Like, you crazy? You can't cut the skin off, you killed the girl, won't you? Suddenly, behind him, a loud crashes. Deafens everything. Everyone get ready as these, looks like these sentinels, come up from behind like the Hellspawn tentacles and Doomsday Squad has arrived. The Sin Devourers recently awoken by She-Spawn who now all know 
is Jessica Priest and they know her weakness, you know? They know what drives her, they know who who is close to her. So unless the Scorch find a way to somehow destroy every last one of these metallic giants, even a single one of them will continue bringing Jessica's past to light, making sure she'll never have another peaceful sleep for the rest of her life. And that's where we end this issue. Gangster, love the Scorch. That's all I got to say. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. I thought it was a gangster read. It's fun. I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can't say enough of it about no more. I just love how Spawn team up. And I love how Spawn is taking the backseat and letting she spawn just like a priest take the front row seat of all this too i love letting characters shine like that with all that being said we begin this issue with mark holding the medieval helmet he knows he's holding history in his hands he knows whoever war in the past has been worn against evil for centuries it's the past he's seen repeating itself once again he sees glimpse of she spawn hunting gunseeker spawn fighting its sin devourers goodman turning corrupt with spawn becoming king spawn when he takes on the hell throne and all visions he has seen before now he goes back to this vision of Vatican City, the year was 1347, when the Black Plague tore through countless countrysides. Fear runs rampant. Some hide indoors, while others set fires to ward off rats and ghosts. And the barbarism was at an all-time high. This guard says nothing. His mission was to pull, was to pull the boy from the piles of the disease and prepare him for his future. Because children are forced into jobs that none should have to endure. Because this empire needs more warriors to combat an enemy much worse than a sickness. They're dying because of monsters on the loose, a creature with no more compass, but instead driven through instincts and the bloodlust of doom. Those that are succumbed are treated like soiled sheets, tossed into piles of dragged off to unmarked graves and burning, hoping that fire will cleanse them forever. And this kid is looking at him like, yo, that's my brother, as he's being taken away from this guard. Because the plague is coming from them after all, and it's not gonna be in the form of a cough. So we see this uh, Pope, or this guy who's entrusted by the Pope, to do this sacrament on this kid. He puts him through this experiment. As he pours his sacrament, the sacrament is acid onto the kid, the flesh from the boy's forehead, and the cheeks seeping down into his diseased cell for a new plague spawn to feed on. The boy dies, slowly. He sees how he'll be resurrected to fight, to battle an enemy that'll consume everything it can, the Black Plague Spawn. So this is how the Black Plague Spawn was formed? Yo, this is pretty sick, but it's sad this kid had endured such torture. But in the present day, the helmet has captured Mark's body once again. Orders from She Spawn are to sit and wait. The Hell Knight doesn't care. Redeemer's like, yo, where are you going? I have an old matter to attend to, says Medieval Spawn, which is Mark inside of Medieval Spawn. Don't follow. Plague is my fight. We have known each other as long as you have known Reaper. And those words shake Redeemer because he knows the answer to that riddle is forever. So Reaper's like, yo, why'd you let him go, Redeemer? I know you've seen it in the future like I have others. They don't understand. What, is it because Jessica Priest, she spawned as the traitor? No, but I know events are coming and she's at the heart of it. So Redeemer's like, okay, show me Reaper. And he shows him a glimpse of the Scorch. Into the future, he knows the Scorch will die, but not how they will perish. Traitors aren't his concern. Reaper and the survival of his world are his only goals. And Redeemer's like, yo, man, may God have mercy on him, because this is brutal right here. So the question is, which domino is going to fall that will bring the world to its knees? And that's what the Scorch now face metallic giant soldiers known as sin devourers and that and their single purpose is to wipe everything every living spawn off of existence and that's what the scorch is dealing with right now so sin devourers like okay encircle the targets it's a tactic that's very old surround your enemy from all sides then attack him as a swarm she spawn is like okay everyone in battle formation but that old tactic that the sin devourers are using also forces their enemies to rise and defend themselves so they start scanning to see what the best form of attack is their technology is a needed part of the process but it comes with a cost and that cost is time enough time for the heroes to analyze the situation too so while the sin devourers are scanning she spawn hunt and Kilgore and Gunslinger spawn, which they found no matches on. She spawns already got a battle formation through experience, what they're gonna do. So, Cinderella's like, okay, terminate all except for Gunslinger. And they let out a blast and go to work. And Kurt is like, yo, I'm going in for the kill. It's the armor, I'll kill it from the inside. And the Sin Devourer's like, don't you see what we are? We've been built to destroy each and every one of you. Though most spawns were born in hell, one of them was rejected. A spawn who itself is built of sickness and destruction. The one who has patient zero. Plague spawn, and he emerges from behind the Sin Devourers. So medieval spawn sees like the plague, and he goes in on his green knight 
horse as he goes in for the kill because he's never forgotten. He's never forgotten what happened in the past. And he wanted this since he had to bury his family in the past. And his prize is to kill Plague Spawn. So she's supposed to ask each of her team what they need and what they were. And Medieval Spawn said it was revenge on a church, but he lied. He wanted Plague Spawn. That's why he joined the group. Now we get this flashback of the boy after he put, put got the acid put on it. He had to be put through this torturous test to kill his brother, to kill his sibling. As he and inside his brother, the real Plague Spawn emerged, and he had to kill him too. And this. It's just a brutal, crazy, sad story right here, man. But I'm gonna get into the meat of this book when Medieval Spawn goes in. And you know, and some of the Scorch teams offer to help Medieval Spawn, but he refused their help. He doesn't want their help. He doesn't want anyone's help because the beast can best be drawn out if he faces it alone. And keep in mind that beast is Plague Spawn. His allies will need to deal with the Sin Devourers himself as his focus is strictly upon Plague Spawn. So he charges in, he's tunnel vision on Plague Spawn and that ass is his, at least so it seems. And so they all watch the Sin Devourers she spawn, Gunslinger spawn, hot, momentarily engrossed by Medieval's charge. And he goes to the Sin Devourer, and Play Spawn's looking at Medieval Spawn like, yo, man, you coming at me strong, brother, with that thunder. And the Death Horror pushed its own limits to the enemy that's revealed in suffering of humans for hundreds of years. And the only motion, the only gesture the beast makes is to allow a knowing smile to cross its face. Medieval Spawn puts his blade, his sword, through the back of his head, out through its mouth, and yes, it seems to be glad at what's about to happen next. Medieval Spawn seems to have victory. But because the girl Medieval Spawn lent his cape to in Russia, Natasha, remember that from a few issues back? She had been imbued by Plague's cancerous touch. She spawned Hunt and Gunslinger, all they can do is watch in horror. But Plague released her as Medieval Sword struck, so she would be the victim of the Knight's death blow. Not Plague, that's a plot twist. He thought he was going after the boy in history, but in reality, he got the girl, so Plague is still out there. And she would become another innocent casualty of this unholy war. And that's where we end this issue. I like the, I like the Scorch series. Is it, It's not as good as Gunslinger Spawn or King Spawn or even Spawn comics. I personally think Scorch is trying to find its bearings here because it's not easy writing a team up in my personal opinion But I still enjoy the read and I still enjoy doing this and I still enjoy um, this read This is a fun read. Do I think it's worth adding to your comic book collection? I think so. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, call me biased, but I personally dug it I mean link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry with that being said now I'm just going to go back and summarize previously what happened was as the battle with the Sin Devourers rages on, the history between the Medieval Spawn and the Plague is revealed to be a lot older than the team realized, exposing Medieval Spawn's true reasons for joining the team. Now as this war is being played out, it's controlled by many competing architects. This one has Master Alchemy and he'll subvert those that'll get in his way. He's not wanting to turn metals into gold, that would just be pointless. What he wants is transformation, turning bodies into his sin devourers. Creatures powerful enough to destroy everything he hates. And what he hates are the spawns, the hell spawns. Jessica Priest, Haunt, and Gunstinger spawn are all subjects to his torture right now. He knows his science won't replace their power of religion, but he can meld with it. Then the gods and the monsters contaminating the earth can be purged from the existence. Their exile will finally allow the human race to live their lives free from interference and their persuasions. Now we see, obviously, all three of them getting tortured, Gunstinger Spawn, Haunt, and Jessica Priest, and this Sin Devourer, this lab rat, or this lab hell spot, what you want to call it, talks about commencing liquid dissection, begin autopsy to affirm their chemical construct. Electroke shocks blast into the core of the prisoners. Shocks that send Gunslinger reeling into the depths of his own mind. Imagine what he believes Spawn will do. Al lock the dead zones. Pen the demons until they were ready to obey him, exposing the Scorch members, making them human once again. And we see Gunslinger spawn in human form, which is Javier underneath. As a human, Javier sees spawn like the ranchers and landmen he knew from his own time. Those who always thought they were superior to everyone, who lorded over poor tenant farmers because they could. To Javier, spawn wasn't fighting against the war. He was building his own empire. He was building his own army. And then we see this guy, this mysterious figure, looking at Gunslinger spawn 
being tortured like look at him searching for some sanity to hold on to when i was a boy in church they told us to find the light in darkness they were wrong i recently realized for survival i need to embrace the light in darkness you see our enemy will create their cults build armies and force us to do their will pitting us at war against one another i tried warning our government i told them to forget their partisan fighting and focus on the bigger threat they ignored me so i created Project K. Your government should have listened to me, Senator. And this Senator, whoever this guy is, well, how I haven't say who this guy is. This guy is obviously the Senator because that's what he called him. Our oversight committees aren't built like that. They rarely move fast. It's not good for their careers. Monet's they didn't allocate the money to you to start a war. They allocate to you to prevent one. You think you can get rid of Spawn without a war, says this guy? Well, he abandoned his team, so why are you starting his war, says the senator. He didn't abandon anyone, says this guy. He has a strategy. He left the team to initiate that strategy. To dominate Earth, that's why I can't kill his team. We need them. We need the team to turn against Spawn. And then we go back to this panel where what happened in the last issue where Medieval Spawn goes on the attack for Plague Spawn. This is where it starts. I gave Soul Crusher and Hunt a chance. I told them Spawn would turn on them. They didn't understand. But this one, this Medieval Spawn has honor in his blood. Medieval will go to Soul Crusher and do our work for us, telling him he murdered Natasha, one of the few humans he cares about. And the others, well, we're in their heads too. And we go into you know jessica priest she spawns panel where her torture goes into her mind and the plan was always quite simple capture a hell spawn then have a skin identify who they might be then create alternate memories they can exploit like in the team's captain she spawned one day she become known as priest but the name she wants no one to know her by she wants no one to call her by is mom and then we see jessica priest in mom form baby are you safe and then they're exploiting her memory right now because she's doing this to protect her daughter she wants no one know that she has a kid but now this alternate memory is telling her especially with jessica priest's uh mom you know her daughter's grandma telling her no my dear jessica will never be safe not for a single day not while you live the life you've chosen your daughter and i will be targets every day and it'll only be stopped when they murder both of us blood will be on your hands and it's all jessica priest lives for and the one thing she's trying to keep hidden from everyone now agent hunt is a different specimen the souls of two men reside in his one body you know him and his brother his status is his body has been poisoned infected by a woman named lydia a woman he once loved that's his blood until she betrayed it and they go to extract more blood but continue draining his blood is not a hell spawn but his dna be, be of use to us and the sin devour machine lab rat robot whatever says draining his blood might kill him keep if we keep extracting his blood it might kill him but this guy's like that's a chance i'm willing to take keep going a house gunslinger spawn only he isn't the dream gunslinger is trapped and has consumed him the buyer can't mentally have him go too far also there's a buyer for this so this i thought this guy was pulling all the strings but now there's a buyer behind all this too because what's happened with gunslinger spawn is he understands these monsters have existed in many realities and spiritual planes and that nothing is a dream so what they see in their head senator is all but another possibility a reality into what might their futures hold so you might be to see the future before it happens that's pretty freaking crazy so that's what it means that's exactly what it is and electro shots gets turned higher triggering the paranoid thread playing in javier's head that somehow spawn is responsible which makes him the one that must be destroyed if he or anyone else is going to survive so in javier's head spawn is the reason for all this and it's looking like this brother's trap of turning the spawns against one another or at least turning the hell spawn turning up against spawn it might play out into fruition but now, in Javier's blinding intensity to save all manifests itself in physical form as he goes after Spawn. But he's choking on himself. And why is he choking on himself? And this brother tells is because in that reality, for the first time, he doesn't win. Do you know the trauma that causes to the human psyche? Knowing that when it matters most, when the weight of your entire existence is sitting squarely on your shoulders, you weren't good enough. And that failure is crushing. My goal is to learn from those defeats so I won't replicate their mistakes. Gunslinger may not know how to defeat a power mad spawn, but I will. I will never let another lord rule over me. Not after the way God treated me. I sacrificed my eyes and an arm for him, and he ignored me just like your fellow politicians. But now I am the curse. Soon everyone will feel the wrath of that word just like this cowboy gunslinger spawn see they're looking at him and dude and he's and this guy is crazy like i am his salvation i am the path to his salvation the sooner he understands that so the sooner his soul could be saved if you let them live 
Won't they try to kill you, says the senator? Hmm, I'm sure they will. They might even succeed, but not if they all have been banished to hell. They now have a choice to make. Stop me or stop or stop Spawn. His darkness is much bigger than mine. I'm betting they'll do the right and honorable thing. And we see Middle of Spawn about to do the honorable thing. Honor is a code to me that has tried to live by. But the church taught him that you cannot trust every man, even men of cloth. Some souls are beyond redemption to think anyone or otherwise would be fatal. You know what I mean? And now after a long journey, he stands at the edge of limbo. His fortified gates, invincible to our eyes, stand tall, but he'll not be denied. He has to come to deliver a message. And he's prepared to deliver that message to Soul Crush. But before him is the cross of returning, the doorway he needs to enter. Events of the past 24 hours heavy in his mind as he steps forward, meaning from the last issue when he had a murdered plague spawn, but actually it was Natasha in disguise. With that guilt, that will be weaponized against him. Soul Crusher, saw yourself as he grows into this portal, enters in, have the courage to face me, says Medieval Spawn. The thing is, who Soul Crusher would just recently learn no longer is, is him. He's been in limbo for so long that he's turned into Soul Crusher, is now the king of limbo. What do you suppose that kind of loss does to a man, being trapped in limbo for so long? An imprisoned hellish giant holds that answer, and that's Soul Crusher because he was trapped in limbo for so long because Spawn took him there. He's killing us, all of us, for practice. Practice for what, says Medieval Spawn? Practice for you and that's where we end this issue of the scorched issue number 10 okay look i i do like the scorch it is not my favorite comic and i'm probably not going to say that for a while but i i gotta read it because it's a spawn comic i just gotta get at it the torture scene with the she spawn gunslinger spawn and hunt getting into their heads mind messing with them to exploit their weakness though that was sick that was pretty brutal right there man i'm curious to see where this is going i don't know if this story is taking too long to come into fruition for what it is or if it's just starting to barely come into fruition what it is i i, I mean it's tough to write a team up in my personal opinion but at the same time hey i'm intrigued enough to keep going but i think the issue is well worth it i think the issue is worth adding to your comic book collection i don't know if k the curse right here if this is the first appearance but if it's a key issue add it but don't quote me on it because that's the first time i've seen of him but with 300 other issues of spawn you never know when that brother might have appeared in that other issue but for the art sake and for the story i think this is worth adding to your comic book collection but with that being said Previously on issue 10 of The Scorched, the mysterious K was revealed to be the curse, with a new plan to destroy the forces of both heaven and hell. So this is where we pick up with this story. We see Soul Crusher going to work on this demon in Limbo. As a test, Spawn abandoned Soul Crusher to Limbo, wanting to know how relentless and how resourceful he was, but most importantly, how ruthless. Joining forces with Spawn can never be as easy as just pledging allegiance to the flag or to the Spawn. Anyways, you get the drift. You have to lose something and you have to have some valuable collateral. Just like Spawn lost Wanda, his wife, Soul Crusher lost Natasha. Now Soul Crusher, Sergi grew up with her. He promised to keep her safe no matter how high the stakes got. Now he's been made into a liar. Because Natasha was dead murdered by medieval spawn on the battlefield when he came for the head of plague spawn that's dating back into a few issues of the scorch i don't know what issue it is but it's been definitely a few issues back and her spear emerges from the water sergi it wasn't supposed to end like this it's not what we dreamed of what we promised each other this can't be our final destiny it won't be says sergi tell me what happened Plague wrapped himself around me like a cocoon. The knight wanted the plague dead. He didn't know I was Plague's host. And she shows him a visual of her getting her head decapitated by medieval spawn. And he is enraged. I offer them my aid and this is what they do? They murder you after spawn traps me here? Goodbye, Sergi. And, and now Natasha's spirits leave. Sergi says medieval spawn and he's just like in his own sorrow my honor demands i come to admit my offense against you i see natasha's spirit has visited to show what happened it's regrettable but i must now plead that you put your grief aside follow me out of here and serve the promise you made when you approached us okay look medieval's trying to save his own ass but at the same time the mission has to be done you come here asking for favor says soul crusher though he feels for sergi's loss Medieval understands that in any brutal war, 
Some allies die unintentionally, but a true warrior must fight on. Medieval spawns about to find out what kind of warrior Soul Crusher is. Will he be a real warrior? Or like so many before him, he'll instead let emotions dictate his fate and he goes after Medieval Spawn. Let's throw down time to get down with the get down. Enough, says Medieval Spawn. He tosses him like a rag doll into the water. What did you put in my neck? And we see something light up and it's a bomb. Ironically, Spawn abandoning Soul Crusher in this limbo to fight untold amounts of demons taught Sergi, that's Soul Crusher's real name, how to become a better fighter, like a champion boxer. Sergi learned to take his hits, fighting weaknesses as he suckered his opponents. He had reworked the weapons on him into a bomb the size of his fingers, small enough to hide it in his fist, lethal enough to kill. You took her head, I'll take yours, says Soul Crusher. These hell spawns always find a way to survive, so he knows he must strike now, as it may be his only chance for revenge, and his forearm molds into this blade, this symbiote blade. Soul Crusher's blade strikes with rage, rage driven by his own failures, failures for not helping Natasha and keeping them together, failures to protect other children abandoned just like him. Damn, this is pretty deep, um, the amount of rage this brother has, but then again, can you understand what the brother? But if he thinks this Hellspawn is willing to die a dishonorable death, he's wrong. What Medieval did to Natasha was tragic, but war is never determined by a single death. And Medieval Spawn takes his blade and cuts off his forearm, that symbiote form that Soul Crusher's blade was on. People die, Crusher, and my part, it is unforgivable. Back off, and he punches him back to the wall. But you must learn to forgive yourself for your failures. Then you move on, because another battle, another enemy soon follows. Otherwise, everything we do is in vain. I mean, if you want to fight, then well, let's begin. Let's fight, you know? I was tricked. But before we begin this fight, I just want to let you know, we have a bigger enemy than myself. Natasha's dead. I was tricked. And though my heart aches, all I have left is to stop the monsters that put her in harm's way. So take your grief and channel it. Use it for a greater purpose. Demons crowd to see the commotion. As much as they detest mankind, they'll be damned if they'll bow to a spawn. Soul Crusher knows this, and though his injured forearm has been severed, he can still feel it and communicate to it. I owe you nothing, and I'll give you nothing, says Soul Crusher. Then get up and fight. Enough with the bullshit. Let's do this right now, right here, right now. Wallow in your self pity. And then Soul Crusher, wait a minute. What about you? You'll just follow Simmons? There are whispers about how weak he's become. I'm not fighting for Simmons, says Medieval Spawn. I'm protecting Earth. So choose what side you want to be on. Soul Crusher presses his severed forearm into the water, jolting it alive. Sergi's body had been put through the same experiments as the Russians. His body was injected with the Spawn DNA. The symbiote transforming Sergi's arm into a living weapon as he envelops around Medieval Spawn. The question is, is Soul Crusher more of a hybrid than a man? And as this symbiote wraps around Medieval Spawn, he's like, you think I have not seen this before? It's a symbiote, what do you think I'm made out of? But maybe there's another way to hurt him. Soul Crusher goes after Medieval Spawn's sword. Many have made the error that holding the knight's sword is not the same as controlling it. It knows the hand of its master and its true wielder. And any who attempt to wield it soon will find themselves slowly going insane as Soul Crusher is just going to work on these other demons. With screams piercing Soul Crusher's every thought, he tells those voices in his head to shut up. Voices, they're calling you, aren't they, says Medieval Spawn. Is this your magic trying to confuse me? It won't work. I know you're guilty of it. Then do it, says Medieval Spawn. Stop talking and do it. If you're so brave, show me. Strike me dead. Damn you, otherwise stop your hollow threats. I said, kill me, you coward. For a long moment, the two combatants stand silent. The next move will determine the future of their relationship forever. Coward, says Soul Crusher. What has your kind done? Tell me, other than slaughter innocent victims caught in the middle of a war you created, go ahead, justify your actions. Talk yourself into thinking you're the hero. You're from hell. Where you're from, they have never been saviors. You destroy everything, lives, and property everything but now medieval symbiote is wrapping around in sergi's uh, forearm where the blade was in place of longer than anyone has known medieval spawn has tamed the dark magics though he rarely uses it it drains his powers at too high a rate 
Today, he makes an exception. So when he sends the severed limb of Soul Crusher back to the Masters, it is not an act of kindness. It is not a warrior in desperation. It is a form of communication. He speaks through the body part as it attaches itself to Soul Crusher, showing him the events that actually led to Natasha's unfortunate death. How Plague used her body, then tricked Medieval's attempt to slay him, and how all of them had been ultimately scorched. This information, these images, says Soul Crusher, what am I supposed to do with it? Use it. Let it be what drives you. We're both victims and Natasha paid the price for our actions. Let us avenge her, says Medieval Spawn. Join me. Join us. We are not your enemy. I don't know who my enemies are. Not anymore. This world, us humans, we need to rise up against all of you. None of you belong here, but I'll figure that out later. For now, take your damn sword, says Sergi. Then, We'll fight side by side for now. Defend the honor of the short life Natasha lived, said Medieval Spawn. When the task is complete, you could turn whatever anger you have left back on me. Hmm, says Soul Crush. It's tempting, but let's just find a way out of here. I'll deal with the future when it comes. So yes, I'll fight. Fight with you. I'll fight with you. After that, I can't make any promises. Fair enough, says Medieval. Now let's go hunt these bastards down. As they leave, the eyes of more than demons gaze upon them, and it's the green eyes of Spawn, the one who put these both of them in limbo. Let's see if both of you are worth all this trouble, says Spawn. The real war is about to begin, and that's where we end this issue of The Scorched, issue number 11. You know, I think this book is starting to come together slowly but surely for uh, me personally when I read this issue of The Scorched. I mean, I like Spawn, I really do, and I wanted to give it a chance. It, it felt like it took a while for it to get its bearings, but now that it's coming together, obviously this was a filler issue, but you cannot deny Soul Crusher and, and Medieval Spawn duking it out in limbo. That was pretty gangster, I thought. But it pushed the story forward now that they finally put their differences aside for now to fight the greater evil let's get into the ribeye the meat potatoes of this story and i'm looking forward to the next issue link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with before we get into the issue, we're just going to sum up the previous issue real quick. The Scorch team have been captured by the curse, while Medieval Spawn travels to Limbo to earn the trust of Soul Crusher. We begin with this narration. Some monsters lay in the dark for years. They wait for you to think they're safe. They enjoy it, studying you, planning, knowing that one day they will emerge and it will be like an assassin's bullet through your soul. Their curse is one such monster having to capture all the spawns. She spawn, Gunslinger spawn, Hunt, all minus medieval spawn, Soul Crusher, and spawn. He's watched Spawn. He studied the Scorch. Long before all this, he was Philip Cron, a boy whose entire life would be devoted to God. And we see that boy listen to the sermon here. And that pastor is talking about there will be a point where you must return that favor to Christ who sacrificed himself. Because the Lord who comes in the end of times will not be the sweet Christ of the New Testament who took everyone in his arms. No, it'll be the Lord of the Old Testament, the one bringing fire and brimstone. Why when he said brimstone, I thought of brimstone from King Spawn in the last issue. And he continues with the sermon, the one with vengeance, the one demanding your servitude. So the only question is, do you want your neck against his sword or do you want to be with the rest of his army behind it victorious? And the question was how that young Philip kept asking himself for months as his obsession grew. How can God see this boy's willingness to go to war for him? And he says in this room, forgive me, Lord, for, I, for my sins. Now that I'll walk with you as my guide. God doesn't bless those who find an easy way to him. God blesses those that submit and suffer. And he submits to that suffering by injecting his eye, both of his eyes, with that needle. And with that, Philip died and the curse was born. He explains that his eyes were given to the priest as a gift, a show of his faith. Within a year, the whole congregation went from thinking he was disturbed to believing in his purpose because he can see he could see the hellspawn's kind the darkness in the world he saw how they maneuvered and planned and he saw that they got more arrogant but you went public like simmons that's when i started praying again says the curse studying the path christian magic the verses i also studied you guys and how you could lose the secret was simmons the same man who took my arm in the battle years ago his cockiness is now yours and i'm going to take everything from you guys 
Meanwhile, in limbo, Soul Crusher was facing his own crisis of faith as we see Medieval Spawn going ham, slicing and dicing. We must get to the exit, says Medieval Spawn. We must put aside our differences and save the Scorch. And keep in mind in the previous issue, Medieval Spawn murdered Soul Crusher's friend Natasha from the previous issue thinking she was Plague Spawn. You can see the previous issues for that. It was covered in detail. And by the way, if you're just joining this channel for the first time, like the video, subscribe to this channel for more comic book reviews and comic book content like this. We also do an occasional comic book giveaway as well. But with all that being said, let's get back into the content. The portal closes. Soul Crusher exits and asks what's next. And Medieval Spawn's like, we have to travel to the Curse's base and we go to war. And Soul Crusher's like, will we get there in time? I don't think we'll get there in time. And Medieval's like, yo, man, I've already taken care of that. And by that, he has the Uber ride of Dragon Medieval style, you know? And Soul Crusher's like, of course you're a freaking dragon. Look, man, there'll be time to explain all this later. Let's go. Let's ride. And it ain't the kind of riding that Russell Wilson's doing right now with the Devil Broncos. It's a different kind of ride. The ride where dubs and that ass is gonna get kicked. Meanwhile, in the lab, the curse has the scientists open the deprivation chambers, freeing the Scorch from the nightmares he chained them to. A suggestion that seems mad. And the scientist is like, what the hell is he doing? Why'd he let him go? And the other scientist is like, it's just the last test. Are you sure you were safe behind these walls? And Soul Crusher goes on, they think I'm insane, but I have my faith. My army is going to burn you and your kind to the ground when you fall. And Soul Crusher continues, let's see what's more powerful, your darkness or my my faith or you could just give up your daughter now Jessica just mind messing with her you'll never touch her says she spawn is that right says soul crusher my father said the same thing right before I killed my mother and soul crusher continues families are fake we're born into them and then feel like we owe them something but God we come to God is a choice he led me to you to draw you into a fight you can't win says soul crusher a gunslinger takes out his gat you talk a lot, says Gunslinger. And one of the Sin Devourers like, attack, defend a creature, haunt, motion detected. You know, automation, you know, protocol get kicking in. You're all weak. All of you, says Soul Crush. He's been prepared for this. And Gunslinger's like, nah, bro, I want some more. I thought you wanted a test. Your confidence is still human, says Soul Crusher. And yet, you're a monster. Let him up, says Soul Crusher. And Sin Devourer has no choice but to release Gunslinger Spawn. You want to go back in time, cowboy? Is that it? Trying to fix the things you broke? Heal the people you hurt? Sorry, that's not gonna happen. Curse mocks him. That and pity are not things that sit well with Gunslinger Spawn. Uh-uh. You talk too much and you know too much, says Gunslinger Spawn. Sidestepping the attack and proud of himself, he doesn't realize Gunslinger was trying to get behind him where the blade catches his throat, a blow that will end most humans instantly. He knows he needs to stop the bleeding or he's dead. All he has are his electrical wires from his sin devourers. He burns them to the wound and hopes they'll be enough. How's that faith holding up, says Gunslinger Spawn? Hey, yo, I love that clap back right there though the onslaught is far from over devour steps in and unleashes his flame toasting gunslinger spawn yo that is a spawn burnt well done right there creature gunslinger spawn neutralized says sin devourer and curses mind needing reinforcements is a loss but he puts his pride away pride is what he sees as the failings of those hill spawns he must be better than them besides he likes seeing the anguish on their faces as their hope for victory slips away and they're about to lose and they know it. And he lets out another piece of dollar, just rubbing in in their face like alcohol on the wound, just about to be defeated. Let me tell you a story about a man named Al. He loses his wife and battles his way through heaven and hell. Years later, he sees an opportunity to use everyone he knows to get this woman back. But he'll have to open the gates to demons and angels so he can get what he wants. And he's talking about the dead zones. And he did do that in King Spawn, in which we did cover that issue too. It's why he needed to build an army of pawns. He needed you as pawns to sacrifice. Enough of this, says Jessica Priest. She's had enough of this. I'm speaking, says the curse. You're demons. I will bring you to heal. And he slams her down, submit, stay down, and don't you dare get back up or as that ass is going to be glued to the ground. You're also soldiers. I'm going to use that and I'm going to use you guys. And he blasts away Hunt. Hunt believes he's about to unleash a sneak attack behind the curse. But that's not going to happen as the curse blasts him away. And the lab rats are like, I'm amazed. All this research, it works. He can beat them. And if he can beat them, he can control them. He'll make them Jesus. And he'll be their God. I mean, that's kind of like what the fill in the sense or fill in the blank is talking about, right? But Medieval Spawn always had a plan. 
one that even Curse couldn't have predicted. Curse trembles, for as much as he studied these monsters, he never prepared for this as Medieval Spawn and Soul Crusher and Bush and Infiltrate in the scene and they're ready to come in they come in a hungry all with that smoke take out the machine says soul crusher and he blasts him away and, and medieval spawn is just slashing and dashing away with the arrival of medieval spawn and soul crusher their victory is swift vicious and undeniable that ass is mine tell your mama to save me a plate well he, she technically can't do that because he did kill his own mother but that says come on now you know we hungry like i said we hungry after that victory, Gunslinger Spawn looks at the curse. He's like, yo, man, I'm going to kill that guy right now. And Medieval Spawn's like, no, wait, he has intel. We need that intel first, then we'll kill him. The curse is defeated. His sin devours nothing but broken toys. His funding and government support are fleeing that very minute. They're done. You've been abandoned, says she Spawn. And they all look at him and they all circle him like, yo, you going to answer some questions before we decide to let you go. And he's like, huh. I haven't been abandoned, not by my lord, says the curse. So who do you all bow to? The insinuation is clear. Spawn put this team together. He was the one to be their general. Yet one year later, they're battered and beaten with little direction, something that needs to be changed. And Spawn appears silently out of the shadows. They answer to me. <laughs> and you know this storyline takes place after King Spawn events. I mean, I love how all these storylines are in parallel. But that is the end of this issue of The Scorched issue number 12 you know what i just love the ending of this and i don't know if this is the end of the story arc but i love to see where this is continuing to go just the fact that these hell spawns minus spawn medieval spawn and soul crusher were all captured by the curse i mean at least one of, there's got to be a lot more story where this came from and who is the bigger puppet pulling his strings and i'm loving where this story is going to go she spawned, aka Jessica Priest. There will always remain threats out there. Threats that at times need special attention. And though she's dedicated her life to destroying those evils, she's also a mother. Having a safer world for her child, that's all that matters. And in her war journal, she has new intel reports on the island off the coast of China that has shown new activities. Monsters fighting, showing off their abilities, hoping they'll be chosen to stay. But where it is, they have hidden files too. With the identities of people like her, like those now trapped on Earth, risk assessment is high. And her solution is to bring outside help. And who is that outside help? She tells Redeemer that they should collaborate with the Freak. And there goes the Freak right there ripping off somebody's arm. So Redeemer, first thing he asked is, why are we going around Spawn, Jessica? And she Spawn is like, well, there's some things we need to take care of ourselves. So Freak tells him what they're about to do is Spawn wouldn't condone it. There's a rumor in the underworld that Simmons has been messing around here, trying to open portals, chasing down a dead wife while people tell him he's a king. It's making some of these bastards on Earth a bit too bold. They think he's distracted, so they're teaming up together, looking for a new leader of their own. And that is a reference to King Spawn, which we covered all the King Spawns on this channel. And the freak continues talking about the island and what he's hearing about it. On this island, they're making monsters fight to the death to gain entry. Whoever is controlling that island, he only wants ruthless people on his side. You understand, Angel Man? So if Spawn isn't here to protect everything, then it all falls on us. And Redeemer's like, okay, I'm in, but we still need a plan though. And Jessica Priest is like, well, then let's make one that you and I, that we all can live with. So on the coast of China, a sanctuary built into the side of the mountain, those wanting to stay within its halls must prove themselves by spilling their blood. And there is only one wicked enough to oversee that bloodshed, and that is Mandarin Spawn, a child of centuries past, from a time where you earned everything and you were given nothing. And he looks down at the people beneath him, seeking his approval. In the crowd, the freak navigates this sea of the dam awaiting the weeding out process and he sees these henchmen of the mandarin spawn rejecting this guy and this guy's like no don't you dare reject me let me fight in the pits and they see that he has the mark 137 on his neck and they're like we respect no one who answers to man-made cults and they decapitate his head on sight so one of the henchmen goes up to the freak and they tell him the mandarin has requested to see you in his chambers, Mandarin Spawn looks at these two people like, what are these files on my floor and why should I care? They're the spoils of conquest. We captured a building filled with many of these files. They contain details of some trapped on this earth, including demons, hell spawns, and angels, and more are out there. And we see Jessica Priest's file up on there. 
Manda responds like, hell spun, huh? Put together a list of those that will eventually try to disrupt us. Now on this panel right here, his henchmen bring out the freak. Mandarin spotted him early in the crowd. He knew freak's walk. He knew his unnatural gait. I know who you are, says Mandarin Spawn. Did the spawn send you? And the freak is like, no, I'm here on my own will, hoping to meet the one behind all the stories. The underworld keeps talking about Chang Li, the deformed servant who killed his master centuries ago, whose soul was turned into a hell spawn. Now Mandarin is intrigued by this freak. Meanwhile, Redeemer and She Spawn get the opening they need up above. And Redeemer is like, dude, this Mandarin Spawn is gonna skin the freak alive. And She Spawn's like, honestly, the freak might like that a little bit. He a little freaky like that. So let's scout the place, then we can make some noise. Below, the citizens of this hell city begin to gather for the evening's entertainment. And Mandarin Spawn continues his dialogue. Everyone in these walls must fight for the right to stay. For those that know my history, they know I believe in earning life, not giving it. So the freak is like, so you want me to fight you? Or you want me to fight these guys? Because these guys won't stand the chance. And Mandarin Spawn's like, no freak, you'll fight me. And only one of us will live. And she spawns like, man, he wants to kill him. And Redeemer is like, well, look, I think the freak is okay with that. So as they begin to fight and they prepare to show down and get down with the get down, the people in the chant chant, kill him, kill him. The Mandarin spawn faces the crowd. The freak is not here for laurels. He's here to eliminate as many of these monsters as he can, but he needs to keep delaying. The longer he does it, the better chances Redeemer and she spawn have on doing their thing. So they go to this vault. She spawn asks the Redeemer, can he crack it? It's more than steel, but he'll need a little bit more time to detonate it from the inside. He uses his strength to crack a hole, just deep enough for him to rest his hands, then begins to power himself up, his body turning into a reactor until... Both of them are stunned at what they see. And Redeemer's like, papers? What were they hiding? And she spawn knows exactly what it is. It's files of those trapped on Earth. The same one spawn was collecting, including all of our files. And Redeemer feels like he's being played. Like, so our mission, what was it? I don't like being used, Jessica. So did we come here to stop Mandarin spawn? Or are we here for your own personal agenda? And she tells him it's both, but I need my file. And whenever someone says but after a previous statement and negates that statement, I get the sense that she was here more for her personal self, but at the same time negating it, if you say. I guess it's a little bit more complicated than that, so we'll have to further evaluate that as we get into the story. They get interrupted by their henchmen. You have disrespected our Lord's chambers. Outside, the citizens of Mandarin's utopia grow increasingly impatient as they howl for one thing, blood. And Mandarin spawn goes in for the attack. Your mind was lost long ago, freak. You've just been a prop ever since. Stop talking, says the freak. Just fight. And so they engage. Mandarin catches the freak with a combination of blows. Swinging his blade deep into his freak's arms, freak licks his wounds and he likes that. Like, do it again. I like pain. And the Mandarin's like, wait, hold on. You, you that kind of freak? That's too freaky for me. And freak is like, well, bro, I said do it again. Now, in this panel right here, we're just going to take a minute for you guys to admire the art. If you guys are liking the content so far, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to this channel. And also, don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection and or or some really cool rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection as well. Now right here it demonstrates that when Jessica Priest was a mere mortal she definitely had some government training and right now she's definitely exercising her government training to help her and Redeemer survive this onslaught attack. And they leave and they disappear and Redeemer flies Jessica Priest up out of there and the freak is like in case you're wondering Mandarin that's my reinforcement and they have a message shut this island down if you keep pushing to build an army we will be back back you think you get to leave says the mandarin spawn i do says the freak but first i'm gonna teach you something freak disables his enemy for a moment then scales a fence to the other side and escapes drawing attention to the other protective forces that work for the mandarin and they chase him down Keep up, boys. I'm barely breaking a sweat. And Redeemer is like, well, should we help him? He's looking up above, and the freak is having a little bit too much fun down there. And Jessica Priest is like, why? He's, he is having some fun. It ain't no fun if the freak can't have that. <laughs> Anyways, as we end this issue, Mandarin is not upset, though. No, a new threat has revealed itself to him. And he's like, they know about us? Good. If they're smart, that will scare them. Later, he'll find out that she spawned saw he had her file. But she doesn't know if there's more, and that means they will meet again. Mandarin will be looking to simply take their heads off. And he tells his gang, 
gather the clerics tonight we begin to plan and that is the end of this issue of the scorch issue number 13 what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know i don't think this is the first appearance of mandarin spawn i don't believe that but then again it's really cool that we got a new hell spawn in the scorch and I love how this new story arc, if this is a new story arc, just starts off with a bang, a new villain, a new threat, and new missions. So previously, after the successful raid on Mandarin's compound in issue number 13, the team is alerted to a new threat. So let's catch you up. A resurrected woman named Nyx messed with the dead zones, and that's in Spawn issue 337, which we did cover. Now that's bad news because the new nightmares are slipping through no matter how quickly Spawn tries to reseal them, like these two, a woman and a beast, banished years ago by Spawn. Now finally they're back in Earth, in love, and driven to recruit others, and they celebrate, you know, by kissing one another. This couple, their names are Necro and Margaret Love. Margaret Love, aka Nadia Vladova, her labs experimented on the homeless of New York until Spawn put a sudden end to her existence, sending her to an afterlife where she became the prey. While Necro was created by human hands using Spawn's own cape and parts of his victims, wielding as much power as Spawn himself, powers that in hell he used to save the woman. And now this woman's like Spawn destroyed you out of fear, others want you to lead them to avenge him. So now after the little bit of pep talk, elsewhere others have emerged near the Kerosene Creek of New Zealand. She Spawn, we're nearing our destination says Medieval Spawn. Copy that says She Spawn, we're finishing prep on our end. And though I don't know how a dead zone near you has opened, we won't make it in time. We're still near Mandarin's Island. And the freak is looking at Redeemer like, boy, your boy praying here. And he kind of freaky. And he's not praying. He's preparing. And he takes the knife from the freak's hand and puts it in his own wrist. And they all look at him in amazement and in awe. And freak is like, I don't know what that is, but I kind of admit, I kind of like where this is going. And Redeemer was forged from a church steeped in rituals. One that requires blood if they were to be effective. And Redeemer says the dead zones, it's connected to a forgotten piece of heaven, a place that speaks to me it's telling me others are forming against us and that we may lose members and gain members as a part of our baptism of survival and she spawns like yo on earth we call that war so now medieval spawn and soul crusher approach the dead zone and they prepare for landing and they go straight for the enemy's heart with this dragon as their uber ride <laughs> so soul crusher asks well how was it open and medieval spawns like it doesn't matter the gate must be cleared of its evil spirits if there's hope in sealing it even temporarily and so crush is like we're in the open we'll be sitting ducks out here i know that's why you need to stay here says medieval spawn so the church ravages land as a child in time they ravaged his body and took his honor so when given the opportunity to correct those atrocities he takes it without hesitation he wants some of that smoke so medieval penetrates deep into the blinding lights and so crusher asked him what do you see? I see their lies and everything that makes them evil, says Medieval Spawn. And he sees, well, these are not exactly angels looking like that, you know? It, it, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look inviting, to say the least. And Medieval Spawn calls them out. Come, you frauds, you corruptors of the innocent. I'm here. Let's see how much courage you retain when you aren't slaughtering women and children. Now, while Medieval is handling business in there, Soul Crusher is left to handle business outside. And whatever enemy he may face, while he's outside, that's on Soul Crusher. And turns out, he has to put on his mask and the enemy of pure beauty approaches him. So Rebecca Love tells him, let me ask you, are you lonely Soul Crusher? Do you miss the girls you couldn't protect in your homeland? Back away, says Soul Crusher. This woman is a weapon, yet her cools coupled with her body have made greater men than Soul Crusher melts at her touch. And Necro looks him like, you're frightened, aren't you? Why? She's only trying to protect you. And Soul Crusher's like, yo, Medieval, you got to get back here. But Soul Crusher must wait because Medieval Spawn is about to cut loose on those angels in there. And his calls for Medieval Spawn goes unheard. And Rebecca Love looks at Soul Crusher and says, our paths are the same. We're orphans from the same motherland. Why join Spawn? What does he have to offer you? We're nothing alike, says Soul Crusher. Then you must have forgotten your past. Necro and Necro comes in and gives him a shakedown. They hope to catch Soul Crusher off guard, but Soul Crusher has trained his body for this exact moment as he unleashes these balls of grenade onto them. <laughs> Either you get out of our way or you join us, says Necro. You're nothing otherwise. So decide, because our group is taking back what they stole from us. You, Spawn, 
all you humans gave up too much power to God, he's deceived you for centuries. And the power you blindly gave him, he used it to separate us, to trap us, but now we'll reunite. Mandarin, the curse, he and his bride, they're all part of that group. Now, back in Medieval Spawn, Medieval has to close the gate, and he doesn't give a crap how many he has to kill to achieve that, and he goes to work. Who wants some of this smoke? Because I do, because we hungry for that smoke. Now, bodies piled up, hordes of demonic angels stack like carcasses at the slaughterhouse. That's when it comes out, when one of the colossal beasts, one of the Galgatha, a favorite breed of God himself, enters the fray. The Lord mandates has been set, Medieval. The portals have created a threat to the vacated throne of hell. Many now crave to sit upon it, including your spawn, but none will ever go near it. None other than God's chosen one. And back at Karrison Creek, Soul Crusher is taking a beating that is meant for Spawn. He, as a mere human, cannot handle a superhuman beating like that. The other Scorch ran for Randoran, yet not you, my brave one, says Rebecca. Let my kiss of death free your courage. And Soul Crusher fights her off with every last bit of energy and tells her to get off of him. He whistles, calling for much need to help. And though Hell may consider itself to be superior, the machines of man's fantasy can be equally cruel and savage and his dragon comes in for the rescue. It's chaos everywhere. Some attempting to leave hell, others trying to gain entrance. So Medieval Spawn wanting none of the trash pass upon earth to go on in the dead zone, Golgotha wants the opposite. Each fighting at the cross purposes all because of Spawn. As Soul Crusher slaps a homing device on Margaret Love's wrist, more powerful creatures attempt to subdue their enemy. But the portal beneath them begins to gurgle and the earth begins shifting. And with a deafening explosion, Medieval bursts from the dead zone, the mighty Golgotha skewered on his sword and falls to Medieval's sword. Medieval Spawn knows, sealing the portal with the blood and guts of one of its most revered warriors will serve as a proper warning to the army of lesser angels, at least for now. Now back between Soul Crusher, Rebecca Love, and Necro, Rebecca Love tells Soul Crusher, warn your Team Crusher, we'll return and our numbers will intensify and we'll fight both you and God together next time. Medieval Spawn's like, we've lost him. And Soul Crusher's like, no, we haven't. I tagged the girl. We could track them whenever we want. We got this. Now it's a long trip back to the fortress. Promises were made when this team was formed. And war or not, they have to be kept. Otherwise, consequences will be met. And Medieval Spawn asks Gunslinger Spawn, any news? What's the update? Well, I've got news for you guys. You and Scorch can go to hell. I quit. And that's where we end this issue of the Scorch, issue number 14. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Hey, you know what? The Scourge, I think it started getting some traction to find its own footing here, and I'm absolutely digging the series. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any other comic books to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry, and don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com for some amazing comic books and rated comics exclusives as well. Previously in the Scorch, Necro and Margaret Love have escaped the confines of hell and are seeking allies to bring their war to Earth. So we begin this issue with Mandarin Spawn feeling like he's been played. And this is coming back, this is a callback to Scorch issue number 13 where the Scorch invaded his territory and made him feel inconsequential, ruining his ego. And he slashes everyone's heads off. And he talks about, you know what, I know my place in the world. You do not become one with hell itself. So you might stand in line to kneel, now who's head leaves their shoulders next and these heathens gather for their right to fight their way into a circle but they back away they fear mandarin spawn but could there also be something else to fear and that's when necro and margaret love come in and they know the answer there is always something greater to fear so necro asks mandarin spawn we have come to let you join us and this is like just another blow to mandarin spawn's ego so he goes and attacks necro like no one comes at me like that no one tells me i should join them you should be the one asking to join me don't let that stuff in scorch issue number 13 play you like that he feels disrespected the disrespect he feels the dynasty that saw him as a freak he became a hellspawn only to have vagrants invade his home so he goes in and attacks and necro's like boy you don't know who you mess with blast him back so they give him another chance but like you says margaret love we like to kill spawn we like respect we like the world we deserve we like revenge says necro and mandarin responds like like others you think you know what buttons to press but go on tell me more margaret love and necro they planned waited for one of the dead zones to open up and they escaped 
all to bring forth an army just like Mandarin had already started. So Margulov tells Mandarin we're on the same mindset and this time we're on the winning side we just need one more. And they tell Mandarin who the last member they need to finish their army. And Mandarin's like okay show us and we will free him but betray me and no monster you summon will protect you from my fury. Okay we'll see about that. So meanwhile at the Black Fortress the scores are falling apart and Gunslinger Spawn is pissed because he was here based on the promise that she Spawn promised him to get him back into time and she knows that Spawn can deliver but he feels she Spawn has kept that promise and Medieval Spawn's like hey calm down let's take it easy and he puts his hand on the shoulder and Gunslinger Spawn's like you best remove your hand boy. So Gunslinger is lost in time, the Scorched are all lost, orphans thrown together through a need to save those they love and Sergi shoots Gunslinger Spawn like arrogant bastard only thinking about yourself. And Gunslinger Spawn looks at him like my advice kid get out while you still can if neither you can deliver my message I'll do it myself. Now remember Soul Crusher Sergi has always been an outsider here. He went from from, you know trying to rid the world of spawns like pale spawns right here but yet he's fighting by their side and sometimes the greater good gets tedious so he just backs out like you know what I ain't trying to fight here you do what you have to do so medieval spawn tells gunslinger you leave us gunslinger spawn and you are not a free man you are a traitor this you must understand and gunslinger spawn does understand medieval and medieval spawn has a code but gunslinger spawn does not and lucky for him Medieval never hits first, but until now, this is even enraging Medieval Spawn. So he claps back at Gunslinger Spawn, and Sergi just throws back a cocktail or something like that, thinking, you know what? I'm gonna enjoy this. So while they're in turmoil and fighting, Gunslinger Spawn is looking for She Spawn and speak of the devil, and she may come. She Spawn tells Gunslinger Spawn, Mandarin Spawn is building an army. Coming home to end fighting isn't useful, and Gunslinger Spawn gets up like, you can't keep a promise. And she tells him, my promise still stands. And the Redeemer's like, cease the fighting you have no idea what's at stake only I do everyone stays and Gunslinger's like huh you and Reaper got some kind of bond or some I was curious about that so he goes into his flashback and it was a momentary flashback I went to see him earlier ever since we saved him from those fucked up angels experimenting on him he just been praying on the mountain looking toward the future he said but me I gotta get to the past and the only person who can help me is spawn not you Reaper told me he'd stop both of us if he needed to said you help so I cut him and that's when we see Gunslinger spawn impelling the Reaper with his blade and the Redeemer's like you cut him little blood never hurt nobody there's no future without the reaper says redeemer spawn ain't no future without our past says gunslinger and the redeemer's like oh past huh let me see if i can send you back and this blast that redeemer does to gunslinger spawn she spawn wants him to stop but this blast is intended to kill and yet one person in the room sits unbothered a mere human soul crusher watches amused despite working with them the commodity that's brought him he's dreamt of these monsters blowing each other's face off the earth his whole life he's been thinking about it ever since Margaret Love kissed him. The fact is, says Gunslinger Spawn, I never felt right with y'all. And if you got a problem with that, me leaving, well then keep in mind you ain't my friends. So he goes in and tackles Redeemer like an NFL linebacker tackling a punter. Though the weakest of the spawns, Gunslinger has some hard things to quantify. And that's his unquenchable rage of a man whose family he couldn't save. And it's the damn thing him and Spawn have in common. So he lays haymaker after haymaker on Redeemer. And Gunslinger like, turn me to dust and I'll crawl into your goddamn lungs and make you cough out an apology. You should know blood is what gets you kind of talking. Would you say that? And this is a reference to the Scorched issue number 13. And I believe he's mentioning the freak over here. So Reaper comes in with blood still dripping from his neck. And he tells him, let him go. I saw a vision in the blood. The winds are blowing from Green World they are gathering spawn is distracted the scorch will have to hold earth without gunslinger and without soul crusher and without me so they ask him what do you mean and the reaper tells him the new bible starts with exodus the end times wiping earth clean and then from that a new genesis if we don't stop it and gunslinger's like well good luck because y'all ain't doing it without me good luck bruh and reaper's like well gunslinger has his own path and so do i and soul crusher come on sergi let's go says the reaper 
and she spawns like well what about us and go back to the beginning says reaper go back to when this all started that's the clue he gave and it's back in the islands of mandarin hordes following the commands of their god and his associates necro and margaret love and so the hordes crash their battering ram against the mountain face over and over again and with each broken stone they get closer to a number their forces need Exodus is coming, four horsemen, locust, behemoth, and leviathan, and a beast even the Bible forgot. So Necro's like, there's a portal to the last piece, the fourth horseman, it's open. And Mandarin responds like, you said the Bible forgot this one? I thought the word of God knew all. Love giggles because she knows the beast these three are seeking goes by one name, Urizen. I'm not fully ingrained and full all knowing who your rising is, but when I looked him up, he is an ancient demonic deity that has existed before time itself. His sole purpose in life was to cleanse the universe by consuming the souls of many, freeing them from the circles of life and death. And he was bound by the armies of hell as he awakens and that's her new villain for the scorch. What do you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I thought this was a gangster read and I'm looking forward to more issues and more spawn content to come. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other comic books or some rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection support the art support the industry i also like to give a shout out to red pill animations that's his youtube channel right there he shares reviews of one of his favorite action figures and most of those action figures that he does reviews on it covers batman or related todd mcfarlane toys i want to thank you for keeping a g and being a top g shout out to you red pill animations so previously on the Scorch, Necro, Margaret Love, and Mandarin Spawn have solidified their pact and are on the hunt for their fourth member. Necro, Love, and Mandarin have cautiously made their approach to him, but when Urizen finally decided to acknowledge their presence, he only had one for them, and they're late. And Margaret Love is like, late for what? We're here because we come to make you an offer. Hell will soon open its gates and do not insult me, says Urizen. You were prisoners. You know nothing of hell. And she takes a step back and she's like, look, man, we mean no disrespect if you will allow us to leave me, head to the ice fields, gather the disease there, then return to me. Urizen's making orders and Necro's like, yo, man, we didn't come to take no damn orders. And he flexed a little bit of power there. And Urizen's like, if you ever want to call yourselves the four horsemen, then listen to me. And Mandarin responds like, he grows angry. Slaves, prepare yourselves. Ha ha ha, says Urizen. You've all been gone far too long to understand the new laws that dictate the rules of how hell now functions. Yet, don't you know your place or who lords over you? And Margaret Love is like, and who might that be? That answer, for now, will have to wait, says Urizen. And by showing him their unwavering determination, their efforts accomplish nothing. So Mandarin spawn orders their attack, and he sends his slaves to attack Urizen, and they all fall one by one, and they get annihilated. He's wiping the floor with them. And at the very least, Mandarin spawn is hoping to impress Urizen, and it doesn't impress him at all. And Urizen's like, look, I told Told you you are all too late and still you blindly waste more time you've all been lied to you think you escaped the dead zones but you did it and he goes to work and he crushes them some more getting these mandarin spawn slaves out the way without even breaking a sweat you were let out says urison and margaret love is like necro you're hurt and he's like i'm fine protect yourself baby so mandarin spawn attempts to ambush and flanks urison and urison's like you your kind has already been cast out i know says Mandarin respond as he makes a clean slice at his wrist. That's why I'm here. Then die like your ancestor, says Urizen. Something is coming you can't comprehend, says Urizen. Yet you're fighting over scraps. That's what you should have been concerned about. Why are you fighting over something so little? And Neck was like, We are, but we're hoping you help us do that. Instead, you threaten and demean us. And Neck comes in and attacks Urizen. You don't know your place. Listen to me, says Urizen. Urizen gets pissed. Our offer still stands help us nail that traitor spawn to a cross and finally bring al simmons to his knees and urison's like okay well what about the rest of it what are you talking about the rest the rest of what says mark love of what's still coming says urison simmons is a spark but used right he can ignite a fire that will engulf everything every star and planet that still exists the entire cosmos forget earth heaven and hell won't stand a chance 
Why, says Necro? Because of Gaia, says Urison. She fears what Spawn is capable of, what he might become. And if he unlocks that potential, he'll begin to wield unimaginable power, opening portals to other netherworlds. So what are you saying, said Margaret Love? Everything is made of star, of ash, of space. The dead zones are black holes. And fortunately, Urizen isn't alone in what he's saying because Reaper is saying the same thing. That Gaia has destroyed this earth before. It was her way of wiping the slate clean when humanity became the obsessive object of God and Satan's lust. So Medieval Spawn's like, well, is it because they wanted our souls so she destroyed everything? Oh yeah, says Reaper. So her children are God and the devil, says she Spawn. They've gone by a hundred different names and like children, they've been fighting over earth since they were born, wanting to control the souls that lived on it says reaper and reaper continues gaia grew tired of telling them to share earth to share the blue ball they constantly fought over so when they refused her patience was only so deep so twice before she's taken the blue ball away from them how says she spun by killing everything on earth that's exactly what she did by poisoning the air and the water so nothing could survive then she destroyed her own children so so chris was like so if they still exist then what recreated themselves and medieval spawns like in my time there were tales of how heaven and hell were god particles that had exploded and reapers like yeah particles more powerful than most things in the universe meaning everything on this earth is also made of those particles and anything that powerful would draw someone to try and and she spawn fills in the breast collects those particles they're going to try and collect those particles now you understand what we're fighting for crusher and i will head to the homeland you guys return to the beginning and she spawns like yeah we're gonna go back to where the time rip was opened by al simmons and medieval spawns like and i know where it is omega island says redeemer so let's go so she spawns like if that place has even the slightest crack between dimensions we need to seal it before something we don't want comes through well little do they know urison's already been coming through not through the time crack but he was been let out so redeemer is like be warned the future i've seen holds no guarantee for any of you and medieval spawns like so some of us may not return and she spawns like yeah i always knew it might come to this so think of your loved ones before we go on this mission she unveils a device she took from spawn's hideout one she saw others use when they traveled to omega island she prays it works the same for her and when the portal opens up she goes first moments later it appears her prayers have been answered omega island is where she's at the place that irrevocably shifted the life of so many it's also the place of delusional hope where for many they think they can go back in time where they belong so they might fix their own past while this isn't the location where spawn caused the time rip it has become the epicenter of the ill effects of that explosion now that clown and sin have both used the island to accumulate power and open a doorway onto the afterlife and medieval spawns like i've been here before fighting omega spawn someone will know of our presence very soon and redeemer's like yo we can handle this and this is a reference to spawns universe which we did cover and that fight between medieval spawn and omega spawn and spawn that took place i believe in spawn issue 317 which we did cover on this channel and that was an amazing story arc between spawn 314 through 317 or 318 which we did cover that on this channel as well so they don't get too far before she spawn hears a sound and she tells redeemer get in the air and find out where that's coming from so redeemer stiffens slightly as anger pours over him he's heard yells like that before in the past and each time a level of torture accompanied it so he flies up in the air through the centuries he's grown tired of the ruthless disregard his enemies give to the life of others he gets hit in the head he falls to the ground he gets up he's kind of dazed and when they realize what caused all this it isn't an enemy that sickened itself with bloodlust it's one of their own the one called monolith which we were introduced to in spawn issue 314 or 315 hope you don't get mine i got started ahead of you because the universe is about to come crashing down I don't know where the hell this is gonna go, but I am in. Urizen's out, Monolith is back. I thought he got killed in Spawn issue 317, but I'm all in, baby, and I'm digging it, and I'm loving where this story is going. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry.
So previously on the Scourge, Monolith has arrived and all hell is about to break loose. So in space, scientists have discovered strange climate readings all across the Earth, odd wind patterns and hurricane level storms. Now their space shuttle, their original mission was to extend travel beyond our solar system to get as close to interstellar space as possible. But something has went wrong with the mission. So when the Frontier asks what's the problem, it turns out the atmospheric re-entry gauge is moving to critical range and Earth sky over Europe is about to turn fire and there's a shape to it that's surprising and shocking the astronauts in space. Something is wrong. Something is dangerously wrong. But the reason for that phenomenon has appeared before and been seen by others though. They lived in another universe when it happened, and Monolith tells the Scorch, the darkness is coming, ready to consume everything you hold dear to this planet. This hell spawn, Monolith has witnessed this before, and he's warning the Scorch. And just a caprice is like, what makes you think we give a damn about your threats? Oh, says Monolith, why you waste your time fighting over land and dead zones? You've ignored a threat that'll wipe out all life. It's time you all woke up and fight your true enemy. Now the space shuttle enters Earth ozone with not the exactness that NASA had calculated it. And with the sound of a massive sonic boom, its destruction can be seen by a third of the Earth's population. News reports will say that it fell down because of engine failure, but the truth will come out. And Jessica Priest sees the space shuttle about to go down and she yells. But Monolith is like, forget thoughts of a rescue. They're already dead, collateral. Burnt collateral to use as a marking, the one each planet gets when it's about to fall. A mark that will shroud your entire world. See for yourself, says Monolith, and he conjures an image of the earth for them to see. This is how it begins. So Redeemer's like, so we're damned. Damned by the sign of the beast, right? Yes, says Monolith. Your planet is now tagged and marked to make it easy for them to find it. It'll shine like a beacon and the hunters will come. And who are these hunters? Well, some call them planet eaters. They were among the first creatures Gaia made. They bring plague and starvation, then raise sea levels, drowning those they can't infect with their seeds. And Monolith continues explaining who they are. And when they are done, they will feed just as they did to my planet. So I got a debt to settle with them. And what do you propose we do, says Jessica Priest. Monolith opens up a portal, and you know something's about to go down. Elsewhere, another group have begun to spread their own virus, one dug up from the ancient permafrost on the outskirts of Limbo, creating a sickness unseen since humans were Neanderthals, fatally killing innocents in record numbers. We're going biblical here, and we're going back in time, but all hell's breaking loose. Necro, Mandarin, and Margaret Love seeking revenge believe this is the only way to bring all all the hell spawns to their knees and Necro is unleashing hell and unleashing all his power and telling them to bow to the apocalypse. But what of the one who sent these three on this mission? Where is he? And that person we're talking about is Urizen. And Urizen approaches his makeshift altar and he tells that altar, it's begun. Does this now make you happy, Sin? Referring to his makeshift altar. Because if you're not the god you have portended, you will answer to me. Now Mandarin Spawn and Margaret Love are in Russia and Mandarin Spawn tells her, I don't like taking orders, even from Urizen. It's only for now, says Margaret Love. And Mandarin's like, man, this is taking too damn long. Why not just murder these people? We can't. We want to control them, not kill them, says Margaret. By making the world sick, we shut it down. Make the people scared, that way they're ready to be corralled. God wanted the weak and the sick to inherit the earth. Well then, that just makes it easier for us to take the food from the feeble. And when my beloved Necro returns, says Margaret, we begin to assert our own will against the Hellspawn and Eurysen. But for now, let him think we're obeying. All this plot twist, you think you're really going to clap back and go around the back of Eurysen? I doubt that, but you know, for the sake of storytelling, let's go with it, baby. Now, meanwhile, in the place of worship, this place of worship will become the next part in Urison's plan, enacted by Necro, who also is acting in his part. And he tells these people, good, you've already learned to bow to accept your servitude, and I offer you pestilence. And he unleashes locusts from hell, looking to meld with the host, hoping to morph with them in such a way that neither will die during their transformation. And these people start forming into zombies, apocalyptic zombies, and Necro is just looking at them like, yeah, that's what I like. I can get jiggy with this stuff. 
but he says it in a sinister way. Now, the Scorch have now joined to stop this invasion, one brought about by the children of Gaia. And Monolith is like, yeah, I'm ready for this action, boss. I want that smoke. Kill everything you see, regardless of what it is, they're all tainted. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them trick you. Necro had been told by Urizen to expect the Hellspawn's presence and to prepare himself. And he's done exactly that. Rise, my warrior, says Necro, and use your new forms. And Jessica Priest like, attack the west, then flank the north and the south. No, says Monolith. This isn't a battle field because the world monolith comes from is brutal he only sees the former men in front of him as a wall it's a slaughterhouse says monolith and this is a wall study between him and necro and the threat about to rain down upon all of them and he won't back away from any of it momentarily caught off guard by monolith savagery the scorch now see the magnitude of what he was talking about medieval thinks that if spawn is unable to return him to home then maybe this brute maybe this monolith might be more capable but jessica priest knows that this is just a tip of the iceberg this is a distraction and everything that's happening is simply a diversion bigger forces have yet to appear and medieval spawns like i sense the same thing you are jessica priest go she fights today because returning to a life that might include her own daughter is what drives her to fight to have any hope of doing that she'll need to wipe clean the main threat and that threat isn't a mob of infected zombies but she still rushes forward with the confidence few of us will ever understand and what may seem to be impulsive decisions is actually her fearlessness a trait so natural to her she can't remember a day she didn't have it because it's been there since the day she came from her mother's womb and since becoming a mother that trait has only became more hyper focused and as this light of beam ascends from above as she arrives she witnesses to them calling forth the greatest monster she spawn has yet to encounter urison and he's coming and he's coming for that smoke and my gosh i hope the scorched are ready for it. and that is the end of this issue of the scorch issue number 17 what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know also if you'd like to add this comic book to your comic book collection or some of our rated comics exclusives link in description and don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com to add some really cool rated comic covers and exclusives to your comic book collection support the art support the industry so let's recap earth had been marked by the planet eaters the four horsemen bringing a sickness to our world and she spawn well she's desperately fighting a virus that was buried under frozen permafrost which has now taken on a hostile form a virus with no cure killing thousands of people now it seeks the heroes of the Scorch team, specifically those with Hellspawn powers, and it's actually consuming She Spawn so it could drain her body's energy and claim it for its own. But while all this is happening as Mandarin Spawn and Margaret Love is watching as She Spawn is about to be taken over, some guttural sound from behind interrupts him. Really, sir, says Monolith, Redeemer, and Medieval Spawn come to the rescue. Monolith, a beast some call the Herald of Doom. But what drives him into battle isn't the threat of the virus itself, but those still yet to come who unleashed it. More events are about to happen, and we all want to see this thing go down. Instinctually, Monolith seeks out Necro, who he knows is her leader. And the thing is, once you take out the leader, the rest will fall. Redeemer's target is Margaret Love. She doesn't stand a chance. Medieval faces Mandarin spawn, both masters of their blades. You know that's a good fight right there. But as he readies a death blow, the virus grabs Medieval spawn as well. He just questioned like, what the F? You know, what, what's going on here? And Monolith punches the ground, creating this booming earthquake, saying, we don't have time for this. It's the planet eaters we need to focus on. They're our true threat. And he knows every second waste that puts them in deeper danger. He's seen firsthand what happens if you let the planet eaters gain any kind of advantage. Get off of me, son. I don't need no planet eating stuff on my body. So Monolith throws one of the virus beasts onto Margaret Love, hoping it will attach to whatever it can and it does and redeemer is like how do we stop this love tell me or you die with us even redeemer knows this has got to be a losing battle i don't know says margaret love i swear the beast controls it we only unearthed it the virus does as the planet eaters did to earth it marks her look at her eyes i am the sacrifice of the different voice that in my death and that of others will our true masters create something better she speaks in a zealot and necro's like 
right? I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what y'all did to her, but back up off of me. I got to save my love, my Margaret love. It's the virus that's taken a hold of her and she's fine. There's nothing he can do about it. Necro is letting emotions get in the way. Love and Margaret love is like, no, nah, I accept my sacrifice. I will be sacrificed. It then appears, the mark, a symbol so ancient no one remembers what its origin is, yet it seems to be part of the DNA of every world. And now the four horsemen have helped unleash it onto our world by breaking into the soil and unearthing the primitive disease. They've let the dark forces of the universe see how fragile Earth really is, making Earth the perfect target. And Mandarin is like, I think we were played, man. I thought the virus was only meant for humans. That's a mistake Mandarin will regret along with our heroes. They now know unleashing yours in was bull jive. Necro says Monolith. He goes and tackles him like an NFL linebacker tackling a running back or a punter in that case. Who told you to set this free? Answer me, says Monolith. Something stirs in the smoke and fire behind him. Something colossal, with no endorments of fanfare, it's Urison. It comes forth like a god, gazing with disdain at those that should be all bowing to him. He appears in the past, and they recognize him, or at least Medium Spawn does. But that was a long time ago when the groundwork was laid, when he passed away, or when he was ended with, or whatever. He was just dealt with back then. And I wish there was an editorial note for what Spawn issue that was, but more on that later. I did do a video on Urison. I could put the card at the end of the video. And Redeemer's like, yo, we gotta run, bro. And those who know of his past are wise enough. If they are to survive, they are not to engage with this giant. And Monolith is like, nah, bro. I seek a truce. So Monolith does know Urison. And the giant understands if Monolith is here, something even greater is happening. So Urison utters two words that none would believe to be said. Yes, truce. No, says Necro, not after all the work we've done. Urison does not tolerate defiance from his slaves and blasts him away with that energy Necro beam. And that puts some damage on Necro, but lucky for him being a hell spawn or a replica of a spawn, that's what saves his ass from being demise. Medieval spawns like, I don't understand, really? Monolith? And Monolith is like, yeah, really, we need an alliance, both of us. Urisa and I have met before, and we both know if we're here at the same time, we don't have time to fight each other because the planet eaters are coming. We don't stop them, nothing else matters. And Urisa's like, I would begin to prepare for them. Monolith, wait for my orders. So Monolith does agree, but that's a lie. None of them have time to sit and wait. Urisa leaves unaware of this deceit. Now all of them return to their battle with the virus, and Monolith is like, I'll take the infected from each side. He opens a hole deep enough to keep the disease at bay, or at least it hopes. Bury them, says Monolith. Are you insane, says Necro. They're not dead, says Medieval Spawn. No, but they're infected. They will be. So Monolith explains that he's seen these markets before. Something sinister has awoken and it kills those you care for. The virus and the markets together, that's annihilation. Your friends are gone. We need to bury the virus back into the permafrost and move on. So they put Margaret Love and she spawned in the hole. Upon her burial, a messenger is sent. So in Medieval Spawn's era, when a warrior fell, in battle Medieval Spawn would find the next of kin and out of respect made sure that they were told the sad news. This brings him to the childhood home of Jessica Priest and her daughter. And Medieval Spawn's like, what the hell, we should have known more about you, Jessica. As he peers in from the shadows of thick green trees, he sees something Hell Spawn's really come into contact with. Tender love, reminding him what he's missing by being here in modern times instead of being with his own family. Medieval wonders how he's going to break the news to them. Leave them be, says somebody off panel, and that spawn coming in. They don't need to be a part of this war, not yet at least. So I need you to catch me up on what's going on, soldier. That will include catching spawn up with the fate of Jessica Priest. That will include catching spawn up why Monolith is now the de facto leader of the Scorch, and why spawn will will need to face this harsh reality as everything is about to change in their nightmarish lives right now. And that's how we end this issue of The Scorch, issue number 18. If this is the end of a story arc, which I believe it is, yo, man, that is some gangster storytelling. Nightmare, what's gonna happen? What the hell is going on with Monolith and Urison? Yo, I'm waiting for all this to unfold, and I hope you guys are too. This is pretty good storytelling in my opinion.
So previously on the Scourge, the Planet Eaters have arrived. She Spawn is dead and Spawn is gonna get his revenge one way or another. He's pissed. So at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, the last time we saw the Scourge team, this is in the previous issue, She Spawn was buried. Spawn had to return to the fold and the Planet Eaters were coming to Earth. The one had already arrived. The one they call Senator Terminus. He's doing a speech in front of 75,000 people saying I pray for your repentance while I'm speaking. All these people being tied up were like, we did nothing. I swear, we followed all of your commands and senator terminus is like sadly that's the excuse you humans always use you continue to fail your missions and he slices them off so others like terminus were sent centuries ago to convert humanity instead his kind were often killed instead what all the planet eaters wanted was to give our pitiful world a chance sending powerful emissaries who could perform miracles they were all revered as saints until they became outcasts and were tortured then beheaded and his handers though were repulsed by his actions and they always managed to keep things on schedule and one of his handers is lady senator the crowd is waiting for you so he goes up and speaks and i hate earth i always have then he goes on to a speech but he's always learned that people all want the same things to be told the sadness of their life isn't their fault it's not their fault and he wants to explain that their sadness in their life were meant for greatness if only someone wasn't holding them down so he greets the people in the stands and he tells them look around and rejoice in the fact that so many of your friends and neighbors are all so here to share the same moment i hope you will all call an enlightenment each and every one of you are capable of not only changing your own lives and this guy is killing with this speech but first we need to take action what has been stolen from you and what has been rightfully yours from the beginning and that's your freedom and this pentagram forms around his eyes and he tells him you deserve so much more so the crowd erupts and knows it, and he has them right exactly where he wants them like cows to the slaughter so elsewhere in oregon at the childhood home of she spawn spawn interrupts medieval spawn this takes off exactly where we left off in the last issue this place is off limits to everyone you know the rules medieval spawn we stay away from those we especially care about especially the children so unless she spawns dead you want to tell me why you're here i'll tell you exactly why i'm here she spawn is dead and her family deserves to know that what are you talking about says spawn so medieval spawn explains her tragedy their conversation is far from being private so as the two of them leave they have both been spied upon by both their fellow soldiers as well monolith and redeemer so as a young one that jessica priest had hoped to protect her daughter she's out the window she tells granny that, th that she thought she saw someone and they were dressed like they were going to some kind of party like they're gonna have some kind of fun so granny's like well come with me baby girl let's get something to eat i want to watch our senator speak you should listen to him and i'm sure she's referencing to senator terminus all right so you know this brother's about to go down with this so monolith tells redeemer i don't understand this custom medieval wants to tell a little girl that her mother's dead and Redeemer's like, well, he wants to honor his fallen warrior. Then honor her by keeping the fight going, not by traumatizing a child. We've come too far into the future. You know that. And you know that if we don't change things now, there isn't going to be anyone left to tell their loved ones are dead. So, you know, we got to do this thing right now. And Spawn out of nowhere tells Monolith, you failed, Monolith. You were supposed to lead them, not worry about your own damn needs. So with the help of Medieval Spawn, the heroes have returned back to the battlefield. I'm sorry she died, says Monolith. It happens with soldiers, but the planet ears don't care how many of us fall. They want total annihilation. The question is, what are you going to do to stop that? And unfortunately, that the answer to that question will have grave consequences. So back to Arrowhead Stadium. This guy is clean up the, the blood that Terminus left. And he's like, yo, man, if this guy is such a saint, why does he keep doing this? And this girl tells him we don't question his reasons. They never question a reason. That's a cardinal sin. That's what got them there in the first freaking place. But the honest of what's happening to the blood before them does beg some questioning. It's like somehow something new is being formed. Terminus and his order have been avenging themselves by changing and transforming their victims into the monsters they already were. So combining them into something that now Terminus can control and this monster, this blood monster just forms and this guy's like, what's he doing? Get Terminus, tell him to stop all this. The planet eaters have judged thousands of worlds, sending emissaries to gauge what planets are not worthy of saving. 
when they find them, they start by killing them from the inside. And this girl's like, I warned you not to question because this blood monster is like, yo, man, your blood is my blood. Tina, says Terminus, your loyalty won't go unnoticed. Step aside now. And she steps aside. Deviant, stand ready for my orders. And this deviant is like, nah, bruh, I followed no one. Oh, you will. You don't understand that just yet. And this pentagram forms around his eyes. And because of him having to leave the groundwork with the speech earlier, Terminus is going to assert his position further. And what of us, says the blood monster. Oh, we move on to other planets, says Terminus. And those planets still await judgment. But first, those who've been waiting must be given a sign to begin their attacks. Tina, connect me to them. And Tina is like, oh yes, Senator. So on a private feed, the call goes out to across the world to chosen leaders with his pentagram eyes and planet eaters in their DNA. Triggered servitude begins orchestrated by Terminus. We got a connection. You're streaming life. So he tells them, followers, we gave this planet a chance. Sending them saints who offered nothing but forgiveness and prosperity. And for that gift, they made those saints bleed, then suffer, but no more. The time has come to finally act. Their own blood being the weapon that'll kill them. So gaze upon it. Even the strongest kneels when ordered and kills when commanded. So geographically scattered, the other leaders, all who've hidden them themselves watch away at terminus and they await their extraction because soon the earth will be dead so in the mountains the scorch seek the blood of their own and monolith is like man this is a waste of time then leave you're free to go says spawn but we're going to find her whether you like it or not so is this some kind of burial and the rest of the team understands that even though the relationship was complicated and strained at times like this a bond is shared between jessica and al in fact this bond is shared with all the hell spawns. So Spawn hunts down the one responsible for Jessica. She spawns death, and that's Necro. And he has the wind howls from across the sky, a storm that he built up inside to sweep it all aside, and he finds it. He's mad at himself for allowing Jessica to get exposed to his enemies when he wasn't there because he had pushed her. And he had pushed her harder than he should have, so he plans to rectify that mistake. He goes in and decapitates Necro's head. Monolith is impressed. And Spawn's like, alright bruh, let's get up out of here, it's time to go. So while the rest of the team knows that Spawn is just getting started, not far Far from them, beneath the snow, a low pitch sound begs to escape. You see, something happens when they bury you, when they kill you, and then they leave you behind. She spawn emerges, and this rebirth is gonna have some unforeseen consequences. Cause you already know with those pentagram eyes, something's happened. She's under Senator Terminus's control. The genetic virus killed her enemy, Margaret Love, and it may have killed Jessica Priest too. But if she spawn is dead, what has risen in her place? All we know is with those eyes, Terminus is under her control. Here she comes, she's ready for that smoke under another person's influence, and it's about to go down. And that is the end of the Scorched issue number 19. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in the description if you wish to add this comic book and or some of our other rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. So previously on the Scorch, the planet eaters are walking the earth and churning humanity against itself. So in New Mexico, outside a military base where the local citizens have increased their protesting, an online forum belonging to the followers of Senator Terminus has begun making claims the government is hiding the proof that other beings exist beyond our world. Amongst the group, Terminus himself appears. Bro from the last issue ain't slowing down. He is one of the planet eaters and he tells his people your government lies to you. Every day they think you're idiots, unable to grasp how their system functions, how it works against you. They need you to be ignorant. It's how they control you, telling you they'll keep you safe. Well, you're not. Yo, bro, why you gotta be so relatable right now? So as he takes over and mind controls these people, they now need to take down the fence and to destroy a planet like a cancer, you make it so the host is so overwhelmed, it begins to collapse internally and these people go ham and they go crazy like jackals as they rush to the SWAT team. And in time as the host take over being so overwhelmed, the entire host will die out despite how hard it fights back. So they have to get word to the 
tower as well as he got word to the tower it's the end of that bro too late so terminus has set himself up as an outsider a politician working against the gatekeepers because governments have made those people so dissatisfied they're willing to go to war for what they believe to be true even if it isn't the mob overtakes the forces commandary weapons all this destruction all this mayhem all has to do with terminus's bidding the planet eater sent magical beings to earth to prep the planet for its extinction humans called them saints then martyred them into the most gruesome of ways but today nah bruh terminus has come to take what rightfully belongs to his brethren this guy holds a spirit of longinus the saint who delivered the killing blow to jesus and but before he can deliver that blow Hey, you know, unfortunately for the guard, he's unable to detect the sudden slip Terminus has magically made behind him. And Terminus picks him up from behind, lifts him up, crunches his head. You're not worthy enough to wield my spear. We came to Earth to show you the majesty of what you could become. But greed seems to be all that drives you humans. You murder the saints we sent. Who will protect you now? Well, you know, silence grips the airs and guess what? Falling from the sky, the heroes have a personal vendetta against Terminus. You know, they've been tortured before. They know what it's like to be disregarded as life as nothing more than a mere commodity. But you know what? They also know that this enemy took the life of their fellow warrior, She Spawn. And they all mean to avenge her. So, you know what? Let's get it. Redeemer is like, well, do we kill the people? And Medieval Spawn's like, no, both sides have been tricked. So Medieval's action incapacitates the rioters, the crowd, thus creating an opening path for Monolith and Spawn to pass through. But back inside, Terminus, as a warm up, makes quick work of the guards. He goes to work and he's all good. Like, hey man, this is just a, this is just an appetizer. Now I'm ready for the main thing because he knows the main event is yet to come. Monolith. Desperate to slow down this invasion, merely hopes to create a diversion by throwing a rock at him. But Terminus barely reacts as he shatters the flying object into a dozen pieces. And Monolith is like, you should have came here alone. Who said I was alone as, you know, Terminus wraps his tentacles and symbiote around Monolith. But struck by the ease with which Monolith is being handled, Spawn has to press his advantage now. As rage boils within Terminus, a pentagram forms around his eye, a blast filled with the cosmos. Energy batters Spawn and puts him back because he don't know him like that. But Monolith was playing possum, waiting for his enemy to let up for a brief moment, making him pay for that moment of weakness. These planet eaters have devoured enough and Monolith doesn't just want to stop them, he wants to destroy them. And that obsessive bloodlust is fortunately shared by others like Spawn. He goes in and lays a haymaker of his own. But Terminus still seems unaffected by it all. That's what grand power does. It gives you the confidence that borders on the edge of delusion. Like the hell spawns. Terminus is also the first of his kind, and thus one of the most powerful too. So Terminus expels the depths of time and space pouring from his mouth, pouring it all over the protesters, his followers. They in turn feel it in their veins, not just rage, but power, supernatural power. As Medieval Spawns enters the fray, they're all surrounded by what? We don't know but they got more power. Is it vampire? Is it monster? I don't know what kind of doom they're about to face, but they're about to face some doom right now. Meanwhile, Terminus weakened in ways he's never felt before because he had expelled all that power and spread the love, so to speak. He's gathered the spirit of Longinus and now plans to make his escape. But he couldn't have factored every possibility because Monolith, a nine foot monstrosity, a creature whose own world was once devoured. And Terminus tells Monolith this planet will fall like yours did. Monolith's grips begin to crumble the craft. And guess what? Terminus has to let out the Deviant. It's time. So that Deviant he took control of in the last issue, it's time. And the Deviant tells him, you need to learn your place. So darkness seeps into Mala's being, compromising its natural functions as he struggles to maintain control of his own body until one hand has to let go. The helicopter, hundreds of feet from the ground, lurches, shaking loose his other hand. Mala falls down, his mind on fire. He envisions Earth exploding, the cosmos folding in upon itself, and the dead zones. And he thinks everything is doomed. 
that nothing in the end will survive. This is all going down and this battle is not looking good for the hell spawns. So meanwhile in Oregon near the childhood home where she spawn once lived, she spawns daughter runs into the woods and tells grandma that there's something out there and grandma's like nah that ain't true and the girl's like grandma I promise something's moved around the woods. I get this eerie feel that we all know what it is but you know what? Grandma looks at the trees and when she looks up the trees they're singed like a fire burns a hole through them. She's nearly 70 years old but in all her life Sarah Langston has never seen such an odd sight or smell such a repugnant odor but aspect chilled to the bone she knows something is wrong. Go back to the house but says a daughter no don't argue with me just go. Don't scold the child Sarah says she spawned. After all we both know how free spirited her mother was. She spawned or is it Jessica Priest but at the same same time is it or isn't it a fire burns within her from beyond a grave that's causing her to change with every breath she takes change into something new and something dangerous but the question is dangerous to who we don't know as the pentagram around her eye is formed and we know terminus has everything and anything to do with it and that is the end of this issue of the scorch issue number 20. you know once again i had a blast reading this comic what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know i have no idea where this is going to go but now that the hell spawns have team up and they actually are facing someone that could give them a run for their money and it's not looking good and the odds are stacked against them let's see how this all plays out in the end and come on now we need gunslinger spawn back in the fray too previously in the scorched spawn forces gather to attack the saints meanwhile she spawn returns from the dead with a new purpose so yeah she had come back raised herself from the dead she had to make sure that her mother and her daughter were very safe this is the first time she apologized to her mother asking her for forgiveness because she went off to fight a war that she couldn't explain to them but in the all context of things it just looks like she embedded her daughter with her mom or she spawns mom but with her daughter's grandma and it just looks all messed up and all kinds of messed up you know what i mean so now she goes back and reveals to her daughter that she has a mom but the daughter doesn't know that well my mom was alive what kind of stuff is this because jessica knows that if she doesn't survive that if she's killed at any time spawn has promised to protect her child's life but that comes at a cost because the downside of asking for spawn's protection is her daughter will also be dragged into this world filled with misery and contempt and danger but gaia and kingslayer are like enough it's not the child's time not yet unless you're willing to sacrifice yourself so the girl can take your place and Kingslayer is like you know the girl isn't ready to assume her status so does Jessica and Jessica Priest goes up to Kingslayer like and I also know you're far from ready yourself and Kingslayer is like perhaps which is why Gaia followed you here so you will fulfill your destiny actually you need to become destiny itself to become the one who can shake entire worlds so meanwhile at the military base where Terminus's followers left in its taters because that's from the previous issue where Spawn and the Scorch are just going ham but they're looking for ancient files and relics and all these saints but since Terminus and the Planet Eater share the same bloodlines they both must want something and Spawn knows what that is it's power it's power over humanity itself but they turn around and focus their attention on something moving in the shadows show yourself says the redeemer stop being a coward and mandarin spawn having a serious case of not being a coward and fucking around and find out that's what he tells the scorch if you guys are so brave step forward show me how brave you really are and none of them step forward because they don't want to test mandarin they don't want that smoke and spawns like okay i'm more calculated here before i fight before i throw it down why did you follow us and mandarin spawns like to tell you where terminal is for as much as I hate what you guys stand for I've been sent here to let you know there's a way to rid ourselves of his threats but only if you join me in this cause and monolith is like hail to the nut we're not joining you for nothing spawn he wants more information who sent you your city murdered itself in the monstrosity is like I did the planet ears plan to take this planet to rewrite a new history one that includes all of our deaths but they've underestimated us. So Hellspawn, what are you gonna do, says Urison? The other factions, they're all in place. Gaia, Heaven, Hell, and now the Cosmos. How do you plan on saving your loved ones, says Urison? And Spawn's like, uh. You know, he doesn't even answer the question. He just looks at Urison like, I can tell you're scared. I'm bound to this Earth, says Urison. So if Earth dies, and Spawn already concluded that answer, then you die. And Spawn's like, 
but they're already here, already feeding off the earth. And Eurasen's like, well, they're not feeding, they're coring it out down to the very center of the planet. So Spawn's like, and how do we get to them? Easy. We break Earth open. So what do they do? With the power of God, these two demons make a seismic assault. Each of their blows as they punch to the ground reaches out across the globe, traveling along the same fault lines of the permafrost the planet eaters had burrowed into the soil. Knowing their actions might create natural disasters, which is obviously it is, as you can tell from these earthquakes and buildings, Spawn has no choice as there's nothing natural about the threat facing this planet. So the dead zone's already been open. Now space and time has become fair game and his teammate she spawns she's been taken by a mysterious force so what he and yours are doing is sending their enemies a message one they won't be able to ignore and while fortified under the bone church of sarajevo he casually sits off the throne as his world is being attacked right now because he's already claiming his world that's terminus from the previous issues he's not even concerned about spawn or uris and pounding away at the earth to get to the core because in his mind this planet has already been colonized they've already won because this planet has been weak for so long making its entire consumption inevitable he ain't worried about nothing bro and because of the way the history of earth is people on earth have been slaughtering and invading one another since the dawn of time men stealing each other's land he just sees that like, yo it's a free-for-all so we might as well take over because killing their enemies women and children that's what the guys have been doing on earth but we're just coming in to you know try him and slave him because we can do it better that's what terminus is thinking and also he has a justification that we tried taming them before it's why we sent the saints hoping to deliver the miracles he's referencing a couple issues of the scorch issue number 19 i believe that he mentioned that and now they're gonna go about it themselves so by the grace of the spear of longinus their land will be shaken then burned so now he's got his fear he's got his boys and he's gonna enslave humanity and he's gonna go to work and by going to work they're going to an all-out war the spear of longinus the bow of saint sebastian the shield of saint peter the planet ears have slayed dozens of worlds with these weapons so instead of idly waiting for their enemies to attack nah bruh we're gonna bring the attack to you and because to these cosmic invaders earth has become personal to them so showing the human cretans that even their most powerful warriors such as spawn monolith redeemer and mount and mandarin spawn and urison when they bring him down to the knees and when they claim victory over them the rest of civilization will shake that fear will be the last thing every being on this planet will feel so for the battle to protect the innocent, the clash of good versus evil has played out across the universe billions of times because the creator of everything we are, everything we see also designed by the most insidious weapon imaginable. Well, Mild is going to work and that's greed. That's what that weapon is. Greed not only to them, but by humanity as well. It's existed forever. Eurasen makes a strange proposition like, hey Spawn, you want to eat Terminus? Then start with your own leg. Terminus won't have to do that. Spawn will take his legs out necessarily, but Spawn's like, okay, you know what? This is kind of too easy. All in the name of avenging the woman he loves, wanted because that's part of his motivation for why he wants to, you know, help out humanity, even though he despises it. All in the name of the woman he loves. But guess what? Eurasen has ulterior plans of his own. And he tells Spawn, you made this easier than I thought. Spawn's like, what? And Terminus decks Spawn in the face and goes down to the ground. Don't be so shocked, Spawn. Eurison has been one of us for a very long time. He promised to deliver you to me to mix your blood with mine. And the reason for that is because that combination of their DNA light mixed with darkness creates a glow bathing Terminus following in its energy. And these blood beasts will become more powerful in that. And this is how the planet eaters have thrived. They molded stardust with their born, stolen from the worlds they've devoured. It's how they created countless armies across the galaxies, turning each of them into gods. And Spawn is the final piece of that puzzle that's gonna make them all powerful and all dangerous. And now Terminus is like, now I have no need for you, Eurison. You served your purpose. So with the Spear of Longinus, he throws it at Eurison, and that's a reward to Eurison, blinding him blinding him so black as black as his soul and now Eurison can't see but as Eurison falls a bigger threat emerges guy has returned her from the dead though still infected with the disease brought by these intruders 
because Guy is angry, freaking angry at those who left this woman in a grave, caring even less for this woman's daughter becoming an orphan, all for the cause of some great war that needed to be fought. Guy is pissed, she spawn is standing over Urisen, even though he's all powerful, she's standing over, light beckoning, but she's pissed, so maybe she's on a good side now. And she spawn tells him, if it's a fight you want, then rise, face the wrath of this she spawn. And that is where we end the Scourge issue number 21. You know what? Awesome, man. I can't wait for the next issue to see how this turns out, plays out, and goes ham out. Look, I'm crazy with it, dude. I'm loving it. So previously in the Scorch, she spawned after being left for dead has returned. Terminus's plans are finally revealed. So she spawned, Jessica Priest has returned from where? She doesn't know, but we know because you follow the last previous issues. But her daughter's life is at stake. A child whom she walked away from years ago, but one day will be more important than anyone can comprehend. That's what Gaia told her. So now she comes for Terminus, and that ass is hers. Not to mention, the world is about to crumble. Spawn and Monolith and the Crook, all they could do is just watch and awe. And she spawns like, time you will abandon these throwaway warrior spawn. Your dead zones await you. And Terminus is like, you've no authority or command anyone. He's a leader of the planet eaters. So Jessica Priest, she spawn calls his bluff. All right then, you say I got no power? You say I got no authority? Then destroy me. Show me your powers if you got control over me. All right, says Terminus. Let's see why you think you're a god. Gods don't have to prove themselves, but for you, I'll make an exception. He charges in, he goes forward. And she spawns like, nah, bruh, we'll see about that. And Monolith is asking Spawn, like, why are we waiting? So Spawn's like, nah, I kind of want to see how much she's changed and how this is going to play out. So she Spawn doesn't think anything has changed in her. Instead, this is her destiny. So as Terminus goes in for the choke and the strangle, she counters that and slams it to the ground and... and and her motivation to protect her daughter is all that she needs. And guess what? If anyone touches a single hair on her daughter, she will gut Terminus alive. Then I'll gut your children and gut them all out. I'll hunt them down. I'm not the only one with something to lose. And Terminus is like, you're mad. Wrong, says she spawn. I have a begun showing my anger. So what happened to she spawn when she was swallowed into the blackness of the void? Did she, you know, like did life flash in front of her eyes? No, they say that when you die, that's what happens, but it doesn't flash in front of your eyes. It gets erased, so to speak. She saw what she thought was important, what she cared about, then realized it was all an invention emotions she created in her head with no connections no real value no nothing instead she saw an emptiness a life she thought was filled with meaning but it wasn't that's when she understood she could lose all of it forget everything except her daughter she won't lose that and terminus is like i feel sorry for you you're being used taken advantage of because of your weak grip on your sanity they'll soon control you he pops his head back dexter blood comes out catches her off guard and once they do says terminus your whole world will go black for one last time and spawn has seen enough he has to go in and have her back stay here jessica we've got this don't Touch me, says she spawn. He's mine. And you can see like the evil going dark on her face. Nah, she wants she wants that revenge. She wants that smoke. And she tells Spawn, you want to be useful, take care of what's in the sky. They all know what that means. Planet Eater, says Monolith. Prepare yourselves. They've come to devour. Now she's seen visions of this attack. In the darkness, space traveling hives loyal to Terminus, whose mission is to burrow into the Earth's core, then radiate out and burrow into the souls of the planet's inhabitants, burrow into the people, draining them of their life's energy. But Terminus first needs to devour the soul of his lifelong enemy, and to do so, Urison will have to die, choking and pleading for mercy at his hands. As Terminus uses the Spear of Longinus, I believe that's the sphere mentioned a couple issues back that pierced Jesus Christ. They both dreamt of each other's death, but now Eurison's demise will be the signal to triggers Earth disintegration. If that happens, she spawn returns back into the darkness. She won't go back there. Not again. She takes it out on Terminus. And he impels her. Yep. He impels her in the midsection. You'll be the first to fall, he says. No, says she spawn. That title belongs to you. And you gotta love how she goes black. And that's scary. And that's gangster right there. And pierces his eyes. 
She pierces his eyes because military has taught her one thing, the eyes will make your enemies vulnerable. Without them, the enemy is confused, erratic. So when you do make your move, make it deep, make it painful, and make it last. None of that Minuteman stuff. Okay, damn, that's a horrible joke. I don't know why she said that. But that eye piercing is going to last way longer than the minute. Make it so your enemy never enjoys a single second of Earth's visual beauty again. Make darkness all they'll ever see again. I'm doing you a favor, says she spawn. You'll thank me one day as blood just bursts out of it like like squeezing a packet of ketchup way too hard in middle school and getting on your friend's white t-shirt because Jessica Priest tells him, I'm gonna let you live as a message to your kind. Tell them if they ever come back here again, I'll make sure every living human acts just like me. Though blind, you'll see the future, knowing I'm not bluffing. She takes out the spear, snaps it, and flexes like that shit didn't do nothing to me. So the rest of the Scorch, they join the fray. They want that smoke. They go in. They go ham. And you know what? They got the upper hand. But today has not yet finished. The battle goes on. And she spawn tells him, Gaia told me this. She said I was to be your queen, to serve at your side, but you couldn't share that. She said you'll never allow anyone to have what you have. And though I never joined you, you discarded me. Why? So you could feast on earth yourself? You greedy son of a bitch. So caught in the whirlwind of anger, Jessica changes her mind, delivering a savage death blow. Though they'll walk away victorious, today will not be the day the Scorch will celebrate. So she spawns like, mm. now that Terminus is kind of decapitated and I ended his ass, I see Urison and his followers left. Terminus highs are pulling back too. They're, they're pulling out. <laughs> Anyways, Jessica, are you okay? Says Monolith. Far from it, she says. And spawns like, I think what he's wanting to know is, are you going to... Are you ready to lead the team again? Who? This team? As she lifts her hand and summons some green power. You let me die. All of you. So no, I'm not leading you. I don't give a damn what you do. Forget y'all. I got my own team. Assembled by Green World's master, Gaia. She handpicked this group after saving all of them from their personal fall into darkness. You got the heap, you got she spawn, and you got the Kingslayer. The boy spawn foolishly saved, now is slotted to be the executioner, the one they call the Kingslayer. Remember Simon from King Spawn issue number two, issue number three, issue number four? That's where he's going back from. Yeah, I know you haven't forgotten if you watched the King Spawn reviews. So Spawn's like, you're disrupting everything by letting them travel through the dead zones. Don't do it. And she spawns like, because it's time. Both worlds saw what's at stake. I can't allow you to do it, says Spawn. Oh, yes, you can, says C Spawn. If it's your only way to save Wanda's soul, think what you do to change your destiny or your own. That's what we're going to do. We've all been damned because of you. And Gaia knew it's why she hid your wife. You know, for insurance, just in case you try to stop her. But we all know you'll try. But some are tasked with slaying you instead. Myself included, says she spawn. It ain't just Kingslayer, it's me too. So do yourself a favor and stay out of our way. You can't do this, Jessica, says spawn. You can't stop me. And Monolith is like, oh, ho, 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 but I can. Then you don't comprehend Gaia's power, says she spawn. And she's about to show that her power is above all others. You, the planet eaters, you're all subject to her. Without her, nothing in the cosmos exists. All this green energy emits, and guess what? They disappear. So all that power that Gaia has, not you, the planet eaters, all of you will owe her. So as the smoke clears, Jessica Priest is gone. Her new teammates are gone as well. And Spawn, they're all gone. And Monolith and Redeemer are like, mm -hmm. I don't think this is over. In truth, the true fight has yet to begin. And that is the end of this issue of The Scorch, issue number 22, where the world's fate is at stake. And this is a Scorch final stand of this battle because a new battle has just begun. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in the description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other rated comics exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. So previously in the Scorch, with the Saints defeated, she spawns sides with Gaia and takes on a new team. So the fight is finally over. The battle for now has been won by the Scorch. Monolith, Redeemer, Medieval Spawn, Spawn, hey, you know, they've won right now. 
Terminus is dead, Urison has departed, and she spawn did some work on Terminus too. And the energy beacon that marked the earth for destruction and called forth the monstrous planet eaters has faded away, leaving the creatures to withdraw to one of the universe, waiting for the next call, looking aimlessly like, come on boss, we hungry, where we gonna go next? We planet eaters and we ain't got no planets to eat. But for now, our heroes celebrate its victory, but it was not without loss. This victory came out of loss, so how can they really celebrate? Sorry, internet, kind of contradicted myself. A little bit dramatic here, but hey, work with your boy, all right? So Medieval Spawn points out the obvious, that they beat their adversaries, yet, but somehow, it does not feel as if they won. Why, says Monolith, because your soul cold leader abandoned you? <clears throat> she spawned left to serve Gaia. I've seen traitors like her before, says Monolith. He adds to that. You know, she spawned gone. She was her leader, but Redeemer is defending her. You're wrong. Jessica wouldn't do that. Not willingly. She did that for a reason. But she did, says Monolith. Next time, I'll pick a leader less human. We needed a true spawn. And Medieval Spawn's like, I'll watch your tongue, Monolith, because you're the outsider here. You will not impugn her character, and I will cut your tongue from your very throat. And Monolith is like, she was never fit to lead this team. So as they're about to, you know, okay, you want the smoke, you're going to get the smoke. And Monolith's like, I want that smoke, because, you know, I already preheated that oven. It ain't smoking enough, so I'm creating that smoke. Well, before they go into it, Redeemer steps in between and tells him that's enough. What about you, Redeemer? Monolith is pissed. He wants to know what side he's on. And the Redeemer tells him, I'm on the same side you're on. The side that fights with evil, not with their allies. Then tell me, Monolith says, the Scorch is now leaderless. Who's going to give us orders now? And Redeemer's like, well, Al Simmons said he'll lead us, and I'll wait until he says otherwise. Unlike you, he isn't about to turn his back on She Spawn so readily. And that's not how we do things here on Earth. We value loyalty. So in a sudden burst of necropathic energy, they disappeared. Spawn and She Spawn. This exactly carries on from the last issue, issue number 22. And they only appeared back at Spawn's base, away from distractions, away from others, or influence. And Spawn tells She Spawn, it's time to talk Jessica and Jessica's like ain't hey, I ain't got nothing to say I'm with Gaia now it's that simple actually it's not that simple oh why says she spawn you gonna hold me here prisoner and give me a lecture because your life turned out so perfectly this isn't about me Jessica says spawn I'm trying to help help says Jessica I didn't ask for your help I told you I quit the team you think you could talk me out of being joined with Gaia oh yes we could talk but I'm happy to do more if it comes to it. You better watch your tongue, says Al. And Jessica's eyes turn green like, you don't want this fight, Al. I promise, I got the power of Gaia, the power of Green World inside of me now. Return me to Gaia, then return my new team as well, because if you've harmed Kingslayer or the Keep in any way, as she gets more energetic, take a breath, says Spawn. Your teammates are fine. Though, they're in a very long walk out in the Himalayan mountains. And this is going back to that last issue where Spawn apparently teleported him. So Kingslayer and Heap, they're out walking. We see a glimpse of that. Remember, I gave you a chance, says she, Spawn. And this is all on you now. And all this necropasmic blashes pushes Spawn back to the wall. And while we admire this image, I will take a quick moment to say, hey, if you like the content so far, like and subscribe to Rated Comics YouTube channel. But... Yeah, hey, let's get back into the content real quick. Her power, it's unlike anything she spawn had wielded before. Stay down, Simmons, as she goes down, prepared to do our anti-hero superhero landing on top of spawn. And the level of that power scares spawn just a little bit because he knows Jessica isn't a true hell spawn and her body isn't built to endure what she has been given. She lays a haymaker on Spawn, decks him in the face. So she tosses it to the side because Spawn knows eventually she will burn out permanently from all that power. It's called too much power, man, and you ain't ready to handle all that power. But she doesn't know it yet because she believes she now serves a higher purpose, a calling for a better destiny. As she Spawn approaches Al and she looks at that smoke that, you know, that Al Sim is impacted on, Stay down, Al. You know you don't know what you're up against. The war between heaven and hell is no longer a concern for her. Touched by Gaia, Jessica Priest has spiritually ascended to something far more than human. And she feels that she's something more akin to a god. But she's about to learn power isn't the only thing that matters. Or that she's the only one that has a destiny fulfilled. 
how long do we keep this up, Jessica? Spawn emerges. And he walks towards her like, you want the smoke? You about to get the damn smoke. What is this? And Spawn unleashes his chains like, this is my power. And he gets these chains up. Show me you can stop it. He entangles her. And not Jada Pink in a tangle. He entangles her. Spawn kind of style. Those are the last words that Spawn speaks to her. He lets his actions do all the talking. As Jessica uses her power and pushes herself harder and harder to get out of it. Spawn uses his necroplasm to form a shield. As she blasts Spawn. Forcing her to tap into her newfound power and use all of it, all of it, and she does use all of it, hitting Spawn with every reserve of her Gaia given power, pushing herself beyond all conceivable limits until. Well, hey, it's done, it's over with now. You know, she came in too quick, like busting the high school. Now, Spawn tells her, Jessica, oh, are you back with us? Yeah, I am. You know, Guy's out of my head now. She took the powers with her. You did that. You literally burnt Guy out of your system. So now that Jessica Priest is kind of, okay, I use so much power that <laughs> maybe she has her own version of post-nut clarity. She wakes up and she's like, I feel like I did things I shouldn't have. It'll take time to clear up, says Al. Guy had forced you to lead a team for her to make it seem so important, so urgent to you. She was trying to implant aspects of herself onto you. How? When she brought me back for the dead, says Jessica, and that's referencing the Scorch issue number 19, which we did cover on this channel. Actually, we covered all the issues of Scorch on this channel, so if you wanna go to the end of the video, after you watch this video and check out the playlist, hey, you can get caught up and binge watch all you want. You were never dead, says Al. You came close, but that was the opening Gaia needed, an opening so she could reset you. But I invited her in on some level by thinking about wanting to quit the Scorch. Well, you're right. She caught you when you were down, says Spawn. But this war and your enemies will exploit any sign of weakness, so I need to know. Can we count on you? We need you on board completely and absolutely. And she's not sure about it. And Spawn's like, well, then you're no good to us. If you want to quit, do it sooner rather than later. And do it of your own free will. Not because someone's in your head or because I'm pressuring you. Do what's right for you. Maybe this will help. So as Spawn uses his necroplasm to transport to Jessica's childhood home of Jessica Priest, a tale of heroism is about to reach its final chapter. Annie, Jessica Priest's daughter, gets a goodnight kiss from Grandma. So soon, all we hear is a soft sounds of peaceful slumber as she leaves the room. And as Spawn and Jessica go into and teleport into Annie's room, she Spawn is like, I hate what my life's become, what I've had to give up. And she referenced that in Spawn's universe as to why she had to give up the life of being a mother to her daughter. And she's like, my daughter, I can never see or share her life. I did that years ago before oh, any of this she Spawn stuff. Now everything is just so complicated. And Spawn puts it all in perspective for her. It's true. None of us asked for this life, Jessica. All we have left is to make sure no parent or child goes through what we have. And she takes it in and she tells Spawn that you really need to think about it. Hey, take all the time you need, says Spawn. And as she lays down and falls asleep next to her, Spawn will stand guard over these two until the early rays of dawn in the morning. Now, after she does all that, Spawn teleports him back to Russia, the headquarters of the Scorch. And as they emerge, Monolith and team are waiting for her. Did she learn her lesson, says Monolith? I'm not in the mood, Monolith. Medieval Spawn is more concerned, like, is she okay? She's alive. But she needs rest. Her body and mind, they'll all need time to heal. And after that, she has a decision to make to Spawn. And Redeemer's like, and what does that mean? That she's still thinking about quitting the team? And they call out for Spawn and he just disappears because their questions go unanswered. Spawn retreats into the shadows, departing in a very ominous silence. And now this disquieting Paul falls over the room as the fate of Jessica Priest and this team is now very much in question. And that's where we end this issue of The Scorch, issue number 23. They go from heroes to potential rivals and the team's uncertain future because Jessica is not sure what she's going to do next. Obviously, I personally think she's going to join back with The Scorch. That's just my opinion because, I mean, come on now. But then again, if she goes into another direction, then that explores another avenue of storytelling that we probably have no idea that how this is going to come to fruition. So I'm curious how this is all going to play out. And you're gonna see what I mean by all that at the beginning with the Rekindle Fury. So in the beginning, in this terrain, there's a ruin of which almost nothing is known. An old church unmentioned in any history book. Its details a mystery to even the most learned scholar. Almost as if all knowledge of it was erased many centuries ago. As if it were meant to be forgotten for good damn reason. 
But until tonight, until these bros dig up the stone and they find a passageway and this guy tells Master Bishop, I like, hear it is. And Mr. Bishop is like, of course it is. He has that sinister look like, let's go down there. But as they go down there, this place, it was built like three or four decades into the 16th century or something like that, but it was built for a specific purpose. And it doesn't look like any church. No, says Bishop, it's not, a, it's not a church. It's a place of worship, but this is not a holy place. But as you can see, it ain't holy. And now Bishop is getting scared about what he's seen because a blade sliced through his people in the whisper and in a quiet way, but very menacing. Now then, the man Bishop is all alone, the daughter of darkness, mistress of deceit. I'm here to free you, says the bishop. Free me? You think you're capable of that? <laughs> that looks creepy, man. And he's like, yes, I know I am. And I know who it is you truly hate. Before you kill me, the one that put you here still lives. If I release you, you could remedy that, all right? I'm gonna give you revenge. And she's like, okay, I've been locked here for far too long with only my hunger and my hate. If you have the power to give me my freedom, then release me. Let me finally have my revenge. Are you telling me something like this, a creature like that, a simple door was keeping her at bay, but there's gotta be something more magical at stake here. Now, in the previous issue, Jessica Priest quit the Scorch, or at least Al Simmons gave her that option. So for Jessica Priest, the last few weeks have been eventful for her. Her team, the Scorch, saved the world, but in that process, Jessica almost lost herself. Self-doubt and guilt came bubbling to the surface. That was before she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with her mentor, her friend, the one person she feared and respected more than anyone else, Al Simmons. Things got ugly, but eventually, Al set her straight. And she goes into this pitchfork bar for an ice cold beer. It looks like a bar nearby my house, Pappy's and Harriet's. If you check that out, Google it. It looks like it, so to speak, without the sinus, so to speak. But sometimes, even a long, fast, hard ride is exactly what Jessica needs to clear her head. <laughs> okay, my mind went somewhere else on that. Bruh. But other times, all she needs is company. So she sits down next to Mark at the bar. Mark, who's low key, got his you know, medieval spawn mask over there, but he, but Jessica tells me I'm gonna need that helmet today. So Mark is like, okay, didn't know why you asked me here. Maybe you were expecting trouble, so I thought I would be prepared, you know? No, no trouble today, says Jessica Priest. I just wanna take a shot. So Mark goes into this dialogue, like, truth is, I don't like being too far from it, and it doesn't like being too far away from me either. So she asks him, how does this whole medieval spawn work? I've never understood it. You and medieval, is it like there's two voices in your head, or is it like two minds sharing one body? And Mark is like, well, hard to explain. I mean, there's a separation between us, but sometimes I just know things or can feel what he is feeling. Sometimes when I see my reflection, it's his. Other times I catch a glimpse of myself as Sir John of York, the man he used to be. More and more, it's getting harder to tell where I end and where medieval begins. And the longer medieval's part of me, the less I feel like myself. I hate it. So Redeemer comes in like, hey man, am I interrupting anything? And they're all not in mask. They're not in their costumes, you know? I said mask, so forgive me on that. Redeemer asked Jessica Priest, are you actually quitting the Scorch? And she was like, well, I was thinking about it, but I'll set me straight. Now I'm thinking about something else. That's why I'm here to talk to you guys about it. But before she could get into that, these guys, Bishop, <laughs> the, the guy who released whatever that creature was from the beginning tells her, hey, Big Red, what's a fine woman like you doing with those two nerd boys, huh? When you could have a real man, huh? Oh, I love to be with some real men. Be sure to point them out if you can, all right? <laughs> if they show up, says Jessica Priest, cool clack back. Oh, says the guy, you think you're a funny lady? And Redeemer's like, listen, friend, we just came for some quiet conversation. We're not looking for any trouble. That's your problem. I want the smoke. See these hands. <laughs> So Mark is like, okay, should I get my helmet on now? And Jessica Priest is like, no, Mark, no helmets because no powers are needed at this time. We do not need them. And she goes to work on bro, just letting him know like, hey, I'm looking for the smoke. And she just goes to work on like, hey, I'm looking for the smoke and you about to get this smoke. Let's start off the fire. So what happened next could hardly be considered a fight. More like a brutal thrashing. In their short time together, the Scorch have faced impossible odds, danger, and fought insurmountable enemies. This was none of those things. The only thing that hit any of these three teammates was a revelation of how well they fought together. Because there's no denying after all they've been through, they've since become a team and a damn good one. So I think that was the clarity Jessica needed to, you know, realize, hey, 
you know, I'm not quitting to Scorch. And she tells Redeemer that, hey, you know what? This made me realize I'm not quitting. We're a team now. So the answer is no, but there's going to be a few changes, all right? Al's going to be stepping away from things. He's dealing with his own stuff. And Jessica tells the team that I got a feeling that things will get a lot worse for Al before it gets better. And she continues with her speech. So that currently makes us a Scorch. We could be many things. Sometimes we'll be a hammer. Sometimes we'll be a scalpel. And other times we need to be a shadow. And the others like Monolith, Soul Crusher, Haunt, the Freak, they're just tools. We use them as needed. So this is like the Avengers cast. We're just going to shuffle up the cast and shuffle up the roster kind of deal. So Jessica Priest tells him, Al left me in charge, but only if I was 100% committed. And I am. But bad things are coming. So we all need to be committed to this and my leadership can i count on you guys she puts the hands up they put the hands back in and they're like hey man welcome to the team and so jessica asked redeemer a question i like to clear some things up what should i call you when we're not in costume i can't call you redeemer all the time and before he can tell his name a crash in the window with all these decapitated heads and bodies go in so now they're like okay we need to put on our costumes on now because some shit's about to go down john of york and that was the former identity of medieval spawn we have unfinished business. Harley says Medieval Spawn, one of the very worst of my enemies. Back from my time. Friend of yours? <laughs> and Medieval's like, yeah, I thought I killed her. You can be sure I won't make the mistake of leaving you alive again. Does she seem familiar to any one of you guys? Give the order, Medieval, and we'll do it. You trapped me and left me for dead. Big difference. The idea of killing you kept me alive all these centuries. Has the Flibiac family name been forgotten? What of my brothers? Does the Violator still live? Oh, hell no, that's a Violator relative. You know she's coming in with that smoke. And she continues her dialogue. Or can it be his sister, the last one standing? If that's true, then I'll take my revenge out on all of you. You'll see why I'm still alive. They call me the Fisserator. And that is the end of the Scorched. Issue number 24, one name, one inferno, a furious reprisal, and a rekindled fury. That's what I was talking about at the end. Sorry for the dramatics on this, but that's what I was talking about. What do you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other rated comics, limited print exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Previously on The Scorch, the Viscerator, the long lost sister of the Violator, has returned to seek revenge against her ancient enemy, Medieval Spawn. But before we get into that, we have to go back 500 years ago. Malboja is chewing out the Violator for losing his battle with Medieval Spawn because Malboja wants Medieval Spawn to join his army. And guess what? He sent Violator to flex on him and defeat him. But instead, Medieval Spawn sends Violator back, crawling back to Malboja, and Malboja's like, you know, you are such a failure. Forgive me, Malboja, says Violator, and Viscerator behind Malboja's ears, like, I told you, Master, he's incompetent. And Violator's like, but Lord, this Hellspawn, though it's formidable, isn't the one you waited for. He's not the one to lead your army. In the meantime, you could use me in his stead, but he was formidable enough to send you back here, wasn't he? He took me by surprise, Malboja, says the Violator. He had a dragon. You see, says the Viscerator, don't believe that mofo. It wasn't the dragon that split you in half, Violator, says Malboja. It was a knight's blade, huh? Failure demands punishment, and I've got the perfect one for you. It won't happen again, says Violator, please, no punishment. You've proven you're not to be taken seriously. You made a fool of yourself. And so, he snaps his finger, a fool you shall be until you gain my trust again. Now leave, fat boy. How long do I have to wear this, says Violet. He's pissed until I say otherwise, a day, maybe a century. Oh, so that's how the Violet became the clown. He's always been that way. That's pretty interesting backstory too. Clever move, master, says the Viscerator. Step from the shadows, Viscerator, says Malboja. Your attempts to manipulate are as pathetic as they are transparent. And yet, your treachery, your willingness to betray anyone, even your brother, is almost admirable. And Viscerator is like, well, you need someone conniving, vicious, relentless. I could take my brother's place if you allow. You want his position? So be it it's yours so that's the backstory of the viscerator so 500 years ago the viscerator took violator's place on earth so for a brief period she became the greatest enemy of the hell spawn now known as medieval spawn challenging him at every turn leaving a wake of death and destruction in her path 
today. Half a millennium later, Medieval Spawn had her magically bound, then downed an entire cathedral on top of her and left her to die. She's back and she's pissed. For centuries, viscerated fed on dreams of vengeance. Today, she intends on making those dreams a reality. And she spawns like, I don't give a damn who she is. We gotta take her out. So Medieval Spawn tells her, okay, we'll get clear. But one thing that the viscerated hadn't imagined was this. And this surprised her. Hell spawns don't work with others and certainly not angels. And she looks at Redeemer like, you're an anti-spawn. What's heaven doing in this war? I'm not an anti-spawn. I'm a Redeemer. And he blasts her back like that because you don't know me like that. And she gets clapped like that. Look, ooh, that's, that's kind of sexy right there. So they ask, is she dead? And Mady responds like, no, I made the mistake of assuming that once. She is clearly stronger than I anticipated. And to that point, she begins to resurrect. We have to finish her, says Medieval Spawn. She's more dangerous than her brothers because she can have children. Okay, look, remember in the past issue in the Scorch 24? Okay, well, those were innocent bar pages that they took out. And they made the regretful mistake of challenging them to a bar fight. So now, even though they're battered and bruised, but the Viscerator made them into something more monstrous. And she tells her children, keep his meanings occupied, my children, but leave the night spawn to me. And Medieval Spawn's like, okay, girl, don't be trying me like I'm some kind of sample because you're about to lose your head. Earlier, the fate of the team was uncertain. Jessica Priest had threatened to leave them, but after some introspection, the team renewed their commitment to the team and to each other. <clears throat> and Viscera is like, boy, your skills have improved, John of York. Violator said you have potential, but he maintained there will be another spawn with enough power to take down Malboja himself. There is one such spawn. Well then, says the Viscerator, I'll just have to kill that hell spawn next. And so in her dreams, in her mind, she's thinking humans should have never been given the symbiote first. So when she presents their heads and her head to Malboja, he might even make her queen to rule at his side. But, you know, Medieval Spawn has to be a buzzkill to her and tells her, you did not hear? Malboja's dead. Spawn killed him long ago. And that was way back in Spawn issue number 100, which we will eventually get to that on this channel. Eventually, just stick with me, alright? There's a lot of comic book content out there. And the Viscerate is like, liar! Oh, I'm not lying, says Medieval Spawn. He took his head too. Neither of us has a master anymore. Medieval, stop talking. Destroy her, says She Spawn. This is a trick, says the Viscerator, like you used before. Symbiotes can't kill their creator. I'm going to go see him, but this isn't over. And she leaves. And she spawns like, I hate it when we're the ones doing all the waiting. I just want to do some fighting right now. But she says she can birth more children like herself. Well, when can that happen? Unknown. She's the first of her kind, says Medieval. Mm, she spawns like, I ain't liking the sound of this. Who would she trust enough to impregnate her? She doesn't have to trust anyone. She could just force them to. And before she spawn could put this together, a gun gets pointed at her head by some girl and tells her, don't move a damn muscle. Get the hell out of my bar, whatever's left of it. All right, lady? And she spawns like, girl, I'm not in the mood. She takes her chains, clap the gun out of her hand, ask nicely, and we will be more than happy to leave, all right? So they leave and the girl's like, okay, all right, well, sorry about that. And once again, she spawns like, I'm sick and tired of people trying to try me like that. So Redeemer's like, I can offer a guess on who the Viscerate would try. Us. How about the one who released her? Ooh, who was that? Well, for that answer, we join a man known as Bishop, hidden away in a place that used to be a house of God. Bishop has always considered himself a holy man, but who he now prays to is anything but divine. And Viscerator comes back, you deceive me. You said nothing has changed since I was in prison. Nothing! You lied to me. Oh, says Bishop, for you it hadn't. We told you, your captor was alive, and where he was, that's all you asked. And Viscerator is like, oh, he's, she's ready to go to work on him. He has partners now, and said my lord doesn't exist. Is it true? Oh, yes it is. But that gives us an opportunity to create our own destinies. So join me, says Bishop. Together, we can give you the revenge you seek while carving your own power base. And when the time is right, I'll exact my own revenge as well. Jessica Priest is and always has been a fraud. She's not worried of being the she spawn and that is the end of this issue of the scorched issue number 25 my theory i don't know what that is i think that's got to be omega spawn or maybe i don't know what that is but this is a heck of a cliffhanger right here what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know and also link in the description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other rated comic limited print exclusives to add to your comic book collection support the art support the industry 
Lastly, this video is sponsored by coffee. So if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in description or donate to the super thanks. But the greatest compliment you can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.